It's the Mixed Martial Arts Hour with... Sports Arts Hour is back in your life on this Monday, October 30th, 2023. Hello again, everybody. And a happy Halloween to you. Look at this. No one designs a set quite like our guy GC. Always so festive. Coming to the studio today. I mean, can we get a shot? Look at this. Look at this shot. Go right here. Look at look at look look at the desk. I mean, look at that. You got the pumpkins. Oh, look at this. You got the uh, the Halloween themed logo. You got the lower third thingy bug over there. You've got the uh, the spy. I mean, this is great. You got the leaves. You got everything here, and uh, it is very apropos for two reasons actually. It's apropos because tomorrow's Halloween here in the United States and around the world. Uh, I learned from my good friend PT that it's actually a holiday that started in Ireland. So I hope you're all celebrating and uh, we'll have a grand old time tomorrow evening. It's apropos because it is, as the kids like to say, spooky season, S-Z-N. For the haters, my friend, for the doubters, for the detractors, for the naysayers, for all those types of people. Because today, my friends, I want to let you know, I want to give you a disclaimer off the top. If you thought that I was annoying, if you thought that I was, dare I say, insufferable over the weekend, oh, it's about to be a hell of a lot worse on today's program. It is about to be a hell of a lot worse on today's program because today, my friend, is the culmination of a story that has really been going on for four years, a story that has divided the MMA and at times boxing and at times combat sports community, a story that in many respects came to a conclusion back in July, and I'll explain why in a moment. But in reality, it came to a real conclusion on Saturday night in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Ah, yes, the kingdom was host to one of the great scenes, one of the great moments, one of the great pieces of theater in the history of combat sports, when our very own Francis Nganou, le prédateur, dared to be great, made that walk all by himself with no one believing in him. Let's be honest. Very few thought that this was a smart idea. Oh, I'm not just talking about leaving the UFC. I'm not just talking about, you know, going out and signing with the PFL. I'm not even talking about, you know, this. I'm talking about actually performing in this fight, actually winning a round. Francis Ngannou walked in there like he was about to take a stroll in Central Park as cool, as calm as can be. And what did he do? He shocked the world. Because make no mistake about it, he shocked the world on Saturday. Francis Ngannou won, in my opinion. I'm not just saying this like, oh, oh, moral victory. Francis Ngannou won the boxing match. Francis Ngannou won the fight. Francis Ngannou won the night. He won them all. Check, check, check. He shut up all the doubters, he shoved it in their face, and he's been doing that all year long. And he finally put that exclamation point, and on this Monday, he's finally getting the credit that he deserves. And we're gonna bask in that credit. Oh, Ariel, is it about you? No, of course not, I didn't do anything. I mean, yeah, sure, people accused me of ruining his career when I had nothing to do with any of his decisions. People accused me of steering him wrong when I had nothing to do with any of his decisions. People accused me of being crazy enough to even think about the possibility of him fighting a Tyson Fury. People accuse me of being crazy for criticizing everyone involved for announcing the Usyk fight before this fight even happened. And so, yes, we are going to spike the football. We are going to be insufferable today. We are going to have a grand old time. I cannot wait to go over this, my friends. It's receipt season here on the MMA Hour. Lord have mercy. I am so happy to be here. I've been waiting for this since Saturday night. Oh, I got to tell you, I had a bit of FOMO. Yes, there was some talks of me going to the kingdom. Uh, it was my daughter's birthday. I made a promise to my daughter I would never miss her birthday. October 28th, my daughter was born seven years ago. I had to be there. She scored a goal. Soccer. Saturday afternoon, I'm listening to the prelims. She's going in there looking like a young Lionel Messi. Both sons scored goals on Sunday as well. I got to see all three kids score goals. Give me that over the kingdom. Give me that or the battle of the baddest any day of the week. But I'll be honest, I had a bit of FOMO on Saturday, maybe a lot as well. And then that all went away 
on Saturday night as I saw our guy, Francis Ngannou, go in there and do what he did to Tyson Fury, drop him in the third round, rock him in the eighth. And in my opinion, it, all the people, there's a difference between a close fight and a robbery. No, 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 no. This wasn't, oh, this is a different, no. This was a robbery, my friends, because that man won the fight. People have been asking me ever since Saturday. They've been saying, you know what, Ariel? Uh, how did you score it? Was it 6-4? Was it 96-93? Was it 97-92? What about the 10-8? Let me explain to you guys something. In no other walk of life does a guy like Francis Ngannou with zero boxing fights on his record, and I'll get to that too. I have some things to say about this. All these people talking about calling him a novice. He's never been in a fight. What the fuck are you guys talking about? He's never been in a fight. He's been in cage fights, all right? Stop saying that he's some debutante. He's not Joe Schmo walking off the street going in there. But nevertheless, you want to you wanna prop up the sport and say, okay, he's never been in a boxing match. It's different. You're wearing the shoes. It's the 12-ounce gloves, all that stuff. Fine, 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 Okay, he goes in there and he does that to Tyson Fury. He knocks him down. He busts him up. He rocks him in the eighth, does all that stuff. You think I'm saying, this fight doesn't make sense under any other you know, universe that we're living in. It doesn't make any sense. No one other than the UFC heavyweight champion of the world gets this opportunity. And so you think that I'm going to apply normal boxing rules? You think I'm going to apply normal boxing rules to a fight like this that doesn't make sense? That, uh, let's be honest, should never have happened? It only happened because they thought it was an easy payday, a cakewalk, all the way to the Usyk fight on December 23rd, which ain't happening anymore. That's what they thought. And so, I'm no, I'm not going to sit there. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. I'm not going to sit there and go, 10-9, 10-9. No, no, no. Francis Ngannou won this freaking fight. Francis Ngannou, on this Monday, October 30th, is the baddest man on the planet. And for the first time in the history of combat sports, we can actually say that about one person who crosses over. Give me the pound for pound rankings in boxing. He's number one. Give me the pound for pound rankings in MMA. He's number one as well. The baddest man on the planet is Francis Ngannou. He's the fighter of the year in boxing. He's the fighter of the year in MMA. And all you motherfucking haters can suck it because all of you believed that he was being an idiot for leaving the UFC, for signing with the PFL, for trying to box, for taking this fight, oh my God, we're going to have a field day. The baddest man on the planet is going to join us at 2 p.m. Eastern. Grab your popcorn, friends. Oh, our hill's going to be, oh, he's going to be bowing down. No, 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 no. This is all about le predateur. I will stand up and I will bow down to the master. In fact, how big was Saturday night's moment? How big was the culmination of a year? Oh, I could just hear, oh, oh, he's doing, oh, he's going to be so, oh, can we get some music? Do we have any music? We didn't really rehearse this, but I have something that I need to do because this was such a big moment and, and it, was, it was so symbolic. You know why? Because there are people in the boxing community that think that we were doing a victory tour against them. No, no, no. We love boxing. What are you talking about? We have Devin Haney on the show. We have this guy, Terrence Crawford. This, we love boxing. This wasn't MMA versus boxing. They kind of framed it as such, you know, with the boxing luminaries and the, this wasn't MMA versus boxing. This was a guy who dreamed big versus all the naysayers. This was Francis versus the doubters. This was Francis versus the UFC. This is Francis versus his own community, the MMA community that was wishing bad on him. This is Francis versus everyone who said that he was crazy. That's what this was. That's what the victory tour was about. It wasn't about him beating boxing. No, boxing's accepting him with open arms. They want him to fight Joshua and they want him to fight Jile Zhang and they want him to fight Wilder and all these people. This was one guy who had the balls to go out on his own and, and give the old middle finger to the establishment who walked out there and shocked the world on Saturday. I don't know if we have any music, Frank. I don't know. But because this moment was so big, we need to immortalize this moment. We need to have a ceremony right now for the moment that will live in boxing, MMA, and combat sports lore. Look at it. This is Francis. He didn't just stop. We like Tyson around these parts. It's not about Tyson. Hey, Tyson fought the fight. He had to do what he had to do. Francis Ngannou, this was him shutting up the world. This was him telling every MMA fighter on the planet that you too can dare to be great, that you too could go out there, that you too could take a risk, that your window is very small, as they like to say. Go out there and be your own man. Dream big. And so without further ado, we shall put this up and immortalize it forever on the wall. Francis Ngannou, knocking out the haters. Oh, what a moment it is. Oh, uh, right next to our guy, Action Bronson, right over there. I mean, isn't that great, guys? What a shot. Shout out to Getty Images. Oh, boy, we got a lot to get to. I can't waste any more time. 
not like I was wasting time. I'm just so fired up right now. As always, we are presented by our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. They are the official sports betting partner of not only this program, but the UFC as well. Please download the app. Let them know we sent you how the MMA hour. It's right there. Oh, I hope you were one of those people that did a little Francis, you know, if you were a guy who sprinkled or a gal who sprinkled on Francis to win, I'm sorry because you are owed some money. But nevertheless, what a scene, what a show it was. Uh, back into the show, Don Davis, who's the chairman and co-founder of the Professional Fighters League. What a coup for them. In retrospect, we all said, hey, the PFL did this right. They got him. They let him go do the boxing match. They get him back. In retrospect, the PFL got a deal here because I feel like last week's price isn't this week's price when it comes to Francis Ngannou. That's what I think. And so let's see what they have to say about his future. Everyone's saying, no, 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 no stick with boxing. Well, you know what? The PFL deserves a lot of credit. They gave him a home. They gave him the deal. They gave him the freedom. That could have been a UFC co-promotion. That could have easily have been a UFC co-promotion. And if I'm a UFC stockholder on this Monday, I'm asking hard questions. Why weren't we involved? Didn't we have this guy under contract for all those years? Why wasn't this a co-promotion with our broadcast partner ESPN? Why didn't we get involved in this? Why don't we have the baddest man on the planet on our roster? Well, He's on the PFL roster. And so I'd like to hear from Don Davis about what he thought of Saturday night and also where Francis goes from here. Prior to that, we're going to be joined by Dan Hardy, who was at the venue. He was doing a great job representing the sport of mixed martial arts on TNT Sports box office with our friends Carl Frampton and Laura Woods. Lennox Lewis was there. Buncey was there. They did a great job. I thought their broadcast was superior, if I'm being honest. I was able to watch some of it as well, and I thought they smashed it. Kudos to them. Uh, prior to that, we're going to be joined by Edward Hearn, our good friend, who was glowing on Saturday night. Get his thoughts, because he was quite critical of, of Francis as well. What does this mean for the heavyweight division? What does this mean for his guy? Anthony Joshua, uh, what does he have to say about what one Francis did? And prior to that, we're going to be joined by Francis Ngannou, live from Saudi Arabia. And I believe his first interview since Saturday, I know he did some media on Saturday, but since Saturday, I believe he had a great video up on his YouTube channel, I suggest you check it all out. Why do I say four years? Why do I say four years? And I don't need to go through everything. A lot of people are, you know, saying, are you going to have the receipts? Are you going to have the receipts? Uh, you know, we don't need to do that big of a deep dive, but of course we're going to have the receipts. I mean, CBS called me and asked me if we had enough paper for all the receipts that we're about to print out today, because yes, we do have to go over a few things. I remember, I remember doing an ESPN radio pre-fight show prior to the pay-per-view in Las Vegas in July of 2019. Uh, this was the card that was headlined by John Jones versus Tiago Santos, also Jorge Masvidal, Ben Askren, et cetera, et cetera. And I remember that Tyson Fury was on the program. And I remember him talking about a special rules fight because that's where this kind of started with Francis Ngannou. I'll be honest, it seemed very far-fetched. But it was around this time that Francis started talking about this fight. Now, remember, June, July, 2019, Francis Ngannou was coming off the win over Junior Dos Santos in, in June of 2019. Remember, Francis wasn't even the UFC champion. He had a bit of a stinker against Stipe and then a bigger stinker against uh, Derek Lewis in July of 2018. He was just a year removed from that stinker. And he was talking about Tyson Fury. We have one of the articles. Uh, our friend Alan Dawson over at Business Insider spoke to him. And there it is. Francis Ngannou is hopeful his UFC career will lead to a boxing super fight against Tyson Fury or Deontay Wilder. That's June 28, 2019. That is right before this came out, the fight against JDS, which happened on June 29, 2019. Around a week or so later, I had Tyson Fury on my show and he talked about it as well. But this was a, I mean, this was a far-fetched dream. There was no chance that this was going to happen. And then, of course, we know in March of 2020, the world shut down and the pandemic happened. And, and Francis was one of those guys who was supposed to fight on one of those cards that got canceled. So they stuck him on the UFC 249 card. Remember UFC 249 in Jacksonville. He, he starches Jarzino Rosenstrike in 20 seconds. Remember, right after that, he's banging the drum. Get me on a card. Get me John Jones. That's where the John Jones thing really happened. And at the time, the UFC was very much in his camp saying, oh, John shouldn't even consider this. He might move down to 185. Remember this? We went through all this. We're not going to go through it again. Trust me. I know we went through it. You can find it on YouTube. But this is when he was banging that drum. I want a big fight. I want a super fight. I want to do this. I want to do that. He also knew in the back of his mind, he only had two fights left on his deal. Well, one of those fights ended up being the Stipe rematch for the belt. 
March of 2021. What happens? He beats him in the second round. He knocks him out. Incredible stuff. He's now the champion. And so between March of 2021 and January of 2022, the UFC tries to resign him because he now has one fight left on his deal and they don't want their champion going into the final fight of their contract and with nothing locked up. That's a really dangerous game to play. But it's a game that the U UFC usually wins. They usually win in these situations. They have incredible timing and luck and the house usually wins. Well, we know what happens. He goes into the surreal gun fight. He's all busted up. He's down two rounds to none. He ends up wrestling three, four, five, and he ends up winning the fight. That was January of 2022. We're approaching two years since his last fight. Then it's a year of will he or won't he? By the way, he gets ACL surgery during that time. Will he stay? Will he not stay? Will he stay? Will he not stay? Is he going to sign with Jones? I want the Tyson fight. I want the super fights. I want this. I want the freedom. I want respect. Remember that whole saga? I mean, this has been, this part alone has been almost two years. This part of the chapter has been almost two years. They can't come to a deal. And it's not like a, hey, we can't come to a deal. Thank you for your time. It's a post-fight press conference. It's unceremonious. It's let's sweep him under the rug and let's say goodbye to Francis Ngannou. And let's let's spin that we are releasing him so everyone knows that we don't want to be in the business of Francis Ngannou, that we don't want to share a piece of the pie with the top ranker, Queensberry, give the broadcast partner ESPN the super fight to end all super fight. No, no, no. We don't want to do this because we don't think that he is, I don't know, worth it. I don't, he's too much trouble. I don't know. You remember that press conference, right? That was Dana White back in January of 2023. 20, uh, it wasn't that long ago. It was just 10 months. Oh, yeah. In case you forgot, this is a portion of what he said. I think Francis is in a place right now where he wants, he doesn't want to take a lot of risk. Feels like he's in a good position where he could fight lesser opponents and, and make more money. Lesser opponents and make more money. You remember that? You remember when they tried to assassinate his character and say that he wanted lesser opponents to make more money? He wanted to not take risks. He wanted to go out there and fight bums. And that really became the narrative for several months because when Dana White says something, he's very influential and a lot of people love him and, 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 and just take everything that he says as gospel. They believe it. Oh, he didn't want the John Jones fight. He was actually afraid of John Jones. He wants to go fight cans in enough, another promotion, or he wants to fight a boxing can. I mean, again, we've gone over this insanity to think that a guy's going to go into boxing and, and that's the easier route. Try to fight a wilder Joshua Fury and that's the easier route. Or try to say goodbye to the big bad, you know, empire and that's the easier route. None of this is easy let alone everything that the guy has been through, which has been well-documented at this point. None of this was easy, but that's the way it was positioned. He's trying to take the easier route. He's trying to take easier fights. He doesn't want to challenge himself. In fact, right after that press conference, we spoke to Richard Schaefer, who was working as a consultant for John Jones, who of course has been in the boxing game for a very long time. And he even backed up what Dana White said. Take a listen. And I don't see in any way, shape, or form, that a Francis Ganyu could go and, for example, beat a Deontay Wilder or a Tyson Fury or an Alexander Usyk. And so, so if you, and I, I, I would have to assume that you and your colleagues and boxing media experts would agree with me on that. Incorrect. So if that is the case, then why do I need to see it? Why do I need to pay $80 or $100 to see a fight when I know who is going to win? Um, I'm not interested in that. And uh, I think he's a terrific athlete, and I think he has some big fights ahead of him. And um, I personally think that's just my feeling, that he made a mistake not working out his deal with UFC. Oh, Richard, I love you, but I hope you bought it on Saturday because it was quite the scene. It was one of the great moments in the history of the heavyweight division in boxing. I hope you watched. And could you imagine at this point, we're at the beginning of the uh, journey and everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an opinion on Francis. And most people, let's be honest, are saying that he made a mistake. His, his peers were saying that he made a mistake. I love Sean O'Malley. I love Tim Welch. The Timbo and uh, Sugar Show. Or is it the Sugar and Timbo Show? Regardless, I love them. But, you know, no one is spared when you look back at history and you look at the receipts. They, too, were critical of his decision. This is what they had to say in early March. 
Francis, and I said it since day one, since he started talking shit on the UFC on Twitter, it's going to be the biggest mistake of his life because now, I think this is Chael Sonnen's kind of uh, original idea. I'm like, dude, or he's, and he's right. Tyson Fury's not interested in Francis Ngannou anymore. He was interested in Francis when he was the UFC champ. Mm. He was the pound for pound baddest or the best baddest motherfucker in the world. Now he's not signed to the UFC. Now it's not as intriguing. Who is Francis? Francis is you know it's eventually going to be like well he hasn't fought in two years. That fight's going to be not as interesting. Tyson Fury's if he wants a big fight, John, why not say just John Jones? That will never happen. But. Yeah, it's almost like Francis didn't even do it because of the money. He almost did it to make a point. No, or something. No, you don't do you do that because you want that payday. You want that boxing payday, and that was in his head. That was in his manager's. Mm. That's what I'm assuming. I'm guessing. Obviously, I don't fucking mm-hmm. know, but I think he's thinking. You saw Connor do it, but Connor did it with the UFC. He didn't do it by himself. The more days go on, the less intrigue, the less care we have for Francis to go to boxing. Are you starting to follow this? I mean, this was a thing. You remember those tweets? These guys don't want him. These guys, he fumbled, he fumbled, he fumbled, he screwed up. I mean, could you imagine what Francis is thinking now at this point? Everyone's, it's 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 almost like there was this self-fulfilling prophecy where everyone wanted to be right. Everyone wanted to be right. Tyson doesn't want this guy. He's not in the UFC. Like, he wants the UFC shine. He wants to beat the UFC. Again, boxers don't think this way, but this is how we think in MMA. Everyone's weighing in. They're weighing in on Twitter. They're weighing in. In the world of MMA, the fighters are weighing in, the active fighters, the ex-fighters, the promoters in boxing are weighing in, everyone's weighing in. In fact, in April, our good friend Eddie Hearn, who we'll be speaking to later on in the program, he weighed in as well. Guess what? Spoiler alert. He was dismissive of his chances of getting this fight and of performing well in this fight, too. Listen to this. You cannot, in a million years, with Francis and Ngannou's ability in boxing and pedigree in boxing, go in and compete technically, skill-wise, not just with AJ, but with any top 20 heavyweight in the world. Oh, it's so good. It, I'm having so much fun. Is everyone else having fun back there? I mean, I'm having a great time. This is this is like great. Broke. I mean, it has just been fantastic. It has been fantastic. I've been in a tremendous mood. I mean, let's be honest. It's been a tough time. It's been a tough few weeks for me and my people. But this, this has been a ray of sunshine. Thank you, Francis, for this. Because, again, it's not so much about, you know, oh, 96, 94. This was about proving everyone wrong. How often do you get a slow build like this? Usually it's two, three months. This has been a four-year build. Oh, my God. Do you remember when everyone was weighing in, guys? Do you remember even... David Feldman, our pal from BKFC, the president of BKFC, was saying, Francis, the clock is ticking, my friend. This is even before the PFL deal was announced. The clock is ticking. You're screwing it up. You're fumbling the bag. You're messing it up. Oh, David, how has this age? How has this age? Do you remember what I'm talking about? Here's a reminder of what David said. And is Francis Ngannou could be, you know, someone, he's someone that, we, that we've certainly reached out to. We talked to him. We talked to his team. You know, at this point, we just feel like he's asking for unrealistic money, and we're not willing to pay that kind of money for him. Um, I do think he needs to make his mind up pretty soon because, you know, I feel like his value will, as the days go on, his value is starting to drop a little bit. Uh, the value is starting to drop. How's that value now? How's that value now for for Big Francis? Huh? What do you think he commands? $20 million on the open market? How's that value now? I mean, yeah, sure. He didn't get a chance to fight Todd Duffy in a BKFC ring. But how is that value now? I'm so excited. Uh, GC did such a great job uh, of going through all this. I even skipped one. Conor McGregor was in studio. We got to give Conor his shine too. Conor was at the event, and God bless him. He was there supporting as well. But even he said that Francis made a bit of a mistake walking on his own, leaving the UFC. We're calling it like we see it here, my friends. This is what Conor had to say. I would have liked, I thought he made an error, to be honest. I mean, he hasn't fought in a minute. Get about under the belt and then maybe start. I, 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 I wasn't sure why he'd done that, to be honest. And, you know, it kind of took the shine off him how it went. And But look, I wish him well. He wishes him well, and he was certainly there. He was one of the few active UFC fighters. By my count, I think it was Izzy Usman who walked out with Francis and Connor was there as well. What a scene that was, all the big wigs, right? I mean, from the world of boxing and the world of MMA and the world of... 
Oh boy, entertainment. I must I must have heard that Eminem and Kanye were there 4,000 times on the broadcast. But I mean, from a boxing perspective, the luminaries that were there was just nothing short of amazing. Do you guys remember the one championship saga and all of this? Chatri was in studio saying he was going to meet with him. Then he puts out the press release saying he asked for too much. Do you guys remember that lunacy? Uh, this is a bit of what Chatri said. Again, everyone was just trying to get ahead of it. And in the process, devalue and diminish the value of this soft-spoken guy who was just trying to capitalize at 37, by the way, not exactly a 23-year-old, not exactly a spring chicken. This is what he said, quote, he was asking for a seat at the board of directors. He was asking for him to determine his opponent's pay, which he eventually got, we'll get to that in a moment. We offered him 16 million pounds, 20 million USD guaranteed. The money wasn't enough. He wanted all of these other non-financial terms that didn't make a lot of sense. We obviously can't give a seat at the board of directors. That doesn't make any sense. He would be a fish out of water in that position. Why is that? PFL, again, credit to them. They seem to be okay with it. And they ended up giving him that deal in late May. And when he signed that deal, if you'll remember, everyone said, this is why you left? This is what we've been waiting for for the past four or five months? The PFL deal, PFL Africa, no opponent, 2024, you're going to box before? Who are you going to box before, man? Who are you going to box? You're going to box... Uh, some jabron who are you gonna box you're gonna box someone in omaha nebraska in front of five people on some app that no one's heard of like come on francis snap out of it you're living in a dream what is this you're embarrassing yourself do you guys remember all of that everyone the pfl deal wasn't the big celebration in fact people were like oh okay great good for you but like is this over have you like snapped back to reality uh, our good friend dana white uh, was uh, at a press conference shortly after that deal and talked about Francis's desire to still box and even used Anthony Joshua as an example of someone who couldn't care less about a Francis Ngannou fight. This is what he had to say. Francis just thinks like, that he's in a position where he's got some Conor McGregor Mayweather fight on his hands, which he does not. Anthony Joshua called it a gimmick fight this week. You know, he, he, when asked about that fight, He's like, I'm focused on fighting the best guys in the world. You know, I'm not interested in the gimmick fight right now. And that's one of the big problems with boxing right now is it's, it's all about these gimmicky type fights. And that's just not what I do here. It's not what I do. I, I did a whole rant about it's just not what we do here and the gimmicky fights and all that stuff. But it's just important for the sake of this story to remember how everyone was shitting on this guy. And this is even before, this is even before he gets the Tyson fight. And you'll remember when he got the Tyson fight, and that was announced in July, July 11th to be exact, everyone, the boxing media, I mean, I, I consume a ton of boxing media. There wasn't a single boxing pundit out there that said, A, they were excited, B, this was a good idea, C, he had a chance. They were shitting on it. Tyson's holding up the division. He's fighting a novice. He's fighting a debutante. The guy has no chance. Where's the Usyk fight? Strip him of the belt. I mean, Talk Sport was going crazy over this. Oh my God, this is such a sham. This is such a joke. How dare he? It's just a money grab. But let's be honest, it was a money grab. For Tyson Fury, this was a money grab. This was a ton of money to kick off this Riyadh season against a guy who didn't pose, I think in his mind, he would agree, a big threat. And then we get the Usyk fight. This was a money grab. It was. But people failed to give Francis that script. This was a part of his journey as well. This was him trying to show everyone that, A, he could be a boxer, that the original dream is still the dream. He wanted to be a boxer before he even knew what MMA was. People failed to give him that script. And so for the next three months, we had everyone weighing in. Everyone was weighing in. Oh, it's going to be an exhibition. There's going to be no knockdowns. There's going to be no knockouts. There's not going to be any judges. It's not going to be sanctioned, all this stuff. In fact, even as late as this week, Eddie Hearn's still talking about why is this fight being sanctioned? This is what he said to IFL. I mean, look, the British Boxing Board of Control are sanctioning a fight in Saudi Arabia next week between a 34-0 heavyweight, who is the number one heavyweight in the world, against a guy who's never put on a pair of boxing gloves in a professional code. So that's all right. Why are you sanctioning that fight? The British title fight out there as well. But why are you... No, the, the British title fight, fine. I mean, it's we're not within their rules mm. to, to hold a British title fight outside of the UK. They change those rules. But they're also sanctioning a fight between the number one heavyweight in the world and a guy that has never boxed before. Mm. And, you know, I didn't know about that Saudi Arabian event being sanctioned by the board, that, that heavyweight fight. It shocked me, to be honest with you. Um, interesting as well. Well, apparently the uh, British Boxing Board of Control, apparently they knew something that we didn't. 
And now he's going to be ranked. And I know you could say, oh, they're paying them off and this is all. I, I get all of that. I, I totally get all of that. But in retrospect, to see everyone just shit on this fight along the way, and then to see all these famous people and luminaries, and yes, I know they were all paid to be there and probably paid handsomely, and I know about the history of Saudi Arabia. We could go through this from now until tomorrow. We've talked about it on this show. Don't ditch, Don't just jump in now and say, what about this, that, and the other? I was getting people saying like, I, de- I bet you won't talk about this. Look at Ariel. I didn't profit a penny. In fact, I turned it down. I turned it down. I turned it down from a social influencer perspective. I turned it down from a broadcast perspective. I was sitting at home with my daughter eating Ben and Jerry's ice cream on Saturday. I profited zero off of all of this, but golly, did I get something even greater. I got the guy that everyone said was an idiot all freaking year shutting up all the doubters. If you can't take joy in that, if you can't see the beauty, the poetic justice in that, I think that you are cold-hearted. And it wasn't just those very famous people whose opinions we really respect. It wasn't just those people if you want an indication, my friends, as to never, why you should never listen to social media, and in particular, the, 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 the nunces, the morons, the dolts on Twitter, these people that don't have their real fucking names attached to their, 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 their profiles with their fake pictures and their fake names and their fake accounts. If you want an indication as to why you should never, ever, ever let these people check into your brain, how about some of these great tweets that we have compiled, or I should say GCS compiled? There's no one better at doing this as well. Can we look at some of the tweets? Oh, these are great. Well, I love Ant Evans. He's first up. This is amazing. And Ant has, uh, he has absolutely walked this back. Credit to him. A lot of people can learn a thing or two from Ant. Uh, Ant Evans back in January, the absolute meltdowns some MMA media peeps are having over Nganu losing his battle with UFC is something to behold. Who are we talking about, Ant? And I love Ant. Ant's a friend, but he could take it. He's a big boy. I get they've spent a full year cheerleading the guy as he pursued a losing strategy, but wow. If I were to guess why they're so irate, I'd say he's been their author insertion in a kind of fantasy fan fiction. A lot of MMA beat writers hate their jobs, their bosses, and especially their crap pay. That's why they over-identify with the fighter pay issue. Francis is an avatar for their own frustrations. Francis had leverage, but he overplayed it. And UFC finally had enough. Now, got to hope PFL have funds or Bellator's bankrollers think Nganu spikes their sale price. What an idiot. And anyone who says otherwise is thick too. I mean, this is the type of, this is the type of hatred that Francis received. This is the type of hatred that people in the media like myself were being blamed. We were being blamed for, for, for steering him wrong, for giving him bad advice. We were being blamed for saying, you know what? It, was, it wasn't about the UFC. If you're getting the most money, get it from it wherever you can get it. It wasn't Francis versus UFC. Like I've said before, having the best fighters fight under one umbrella is great for all of us because we could just see the best fights. This is about a guy going out there and making the walk and realizing that he only has a few years left and realizing his own dreams. Why was everyone shitting on it so bad? Let's go to more tweets. I love these. These are the best. Oh, the tweets were fantastic. What else do we have here? Oh, this is a great guy. Fonzo MMA. And Ganu is officially done in the UFC now. Congrats to all who pushed him to quote unquote be free. You ruined his career. And how many times did I hear from the freaking dolts, the morons, the losers, the idiots on Twitter who said, you ruined his career. No, no, no. Uh, oh, Ariel's making it about himself. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm actually the one who got these messages. You ruined his career. I was never in a board meeting with Francis. Never asked me to negotiate a deal. Never asked my opinion on any of these things. Let's go to more. Oh my God, this is great. Let's admit that Francis Ngannou dropped the ball on that stupid decision to leave the UFC. Now he's jobless and going around begging boxers to have exhibition fights. He legit ended his own career out of, can't even spell, out of fear and greed. Fear and greed. Wow, he ruined his career, guys, out of fear and greed. How that makes any sense? I mean, we all want to make the most amount of money. And what was he afraid of? Oh, he was afraid of walking in there against Tyson Fury, the lineal heavyweight champion of the world. Let's go to more. These are great. Oh, this is a good one. I like this one. This is a fun one. Uh, Azim, shout out to my boy Azim. I blame the downfall of Nganu mainly on all of you deluded fans and media, Ariel, for encouraging him to leave the UFC like it was a good idea, all because you're so anti-UFC. He was essentially ruined his career. The UFC always wins. 
We should know this by now. These are great. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. These are too good. Oh, Stamkos, shout out to him. Francis Ngannou should sue. He should sue the MMA media who essentially ruined his career. Talking him into turning down three to 24 million or three fights, 24 million, whatever. He's probably going to make that much for this fight alone. Nobody wants to see the guy box. Hmm. He burnt the UFC bridge. If not, He's taking a pay cut from 3 to 24. He hasn't fought in 60 months, and yet nobody seems to care. Boy, they seem to care on Saturday. I'll tell you that much. They seem to care. Let's keep going. This stuff is too good. I mean, this is just chicken soup for the soul. This was the best when everyone was going like, this guy turned him down, this guy turned him down, this guy. Never going with the next. For some reason, we and I was talking to my friend Dan Canobio about this inside Boxing Live. He's like, oh, Ariel's taking a victory lap over the boxing community. No, 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 no. This was the MMA community that for some reason was wishing harm on this guy, that was wishing for him to fail. It was it was the most self-sabotaging thing that I've ever seen, this self-fulfilling prophecy where they wanted their own to fail. Unbelievable. The losers. Shout out to the MMA journalist that ruined Ngannou's career. Oh, boy, we feel so bad. We feel so bad about ruining his career. You fucking morons. We, all we were doing was talking about the truth. We were talking about this guy going out there. And, and what I said, what did I say time and again? Let's wait till this plays out. If it ends up being the PFL in some fight on some app that we don't know anything about in uh, some random town, Idaho, yeah, it didn't work out. Do you think it worked out now? Do you think he's pretty much in demand in two sports now? What do you guys think? More tweets, more tweets. Oh, this is one of my favorites, which I'm told has now been deleted. A tweet back in May, Ariel Hawani and Luke Thomas, shout out to Big Luke, need to be held accountable. It's like we create, com committed some war crimes here for letting Ngannou believe that he could leave the UFC and find success. I know it was Ngannou's decision, but the media genuinely could have influenced that decision that ruined his career. Let me tell you guys something. Francis is a big boy. We didn't convince him to leave. We didn't convince him to stay. We didn't convince him to... He knew exactly what he wanted. So for you dolts to give us that much power and, 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 and credit... I appreciate that you think we have that much influence. But to write bullshit like this, oh, I hope that you feel ashamed of yourself. Please send me all the apologies. And that's what this was all about on Saturday because I had to read utter nonsense like this for a year from people who knew, know nothing, who have never talked to a fighter, who know nothing about this business, who know nothing about the fight business, who know nothing about what fighters go through. They were rooting against them. Recognize that. MMA fans were rooting against the MMA fighter who had the balls, the cojones, to make that walk alone. Do we have other tweets? I mean, I can't, I, I oh my God. Here I am talking about Hamza Chemaev, who was frustrated back in May that he couldn't get a fight. And I said, remember this when you hear we have to give them three fights a year because that too is a fallacy. And what about Zubre? I mean, again, all bullshit names, bullshit pictures, bullshit handles. Remember when Ariel ruined Ngannou's career? Remember this. So when everyone comes in like, Ariel, why are you sucking him off? Why are you because I had to read shit like this for a year. Oh, why are you so, so thin-skinned? Because I had to read utter nonsense like this for a year. Another great one. When Francis came on to announce the, uh, the PFL deal, you honestly single-handedly ruined his career by endorsing and pushing everything he did. Oh, my. I mean, does anyone else just... Love that. I mean, am I the only one having a grand old time here? I'm having one of the best days of my life just reading this stuff. These are incredible finds, GC. Thank you so much. This might be your best work to date. Do we have more? Because I'm just enjoying this. Shout out to Tristan, who actually has a real face on this. Do we have any more, or is that no, it? No, so that's it. That's it. Okay, you look fantastic. Um, Hello. Happy Halloween. Yeah, I guess oh, I mean, I'm having yeah. a blast back uh, here. But, uh, no one else got the got the memo about the costumes. Frank didn't get a mask. Rick is just playing Jane. You know, you just got your... Your flannel shared on, so this is embarrassing. But yeah, I am having fun. Oh my god, you did! I also do have to say about the tweets, like digging them up. It was not hard. All you had to do was type in "Ingano ruined," "Ingano <laughs> idiot," "Ingano stupid," and there was just—I mean, there was a million to go through. All these people are like, "Oh, you bookmarked these tweets. I can't believe you saved these." It's like, nah, they live on the internet forever, and you can find them yeah, just I, instantly. I, I, I mean, I some never, of them were just gold. You have seen my bookmarks oh, folder. Yeah. Yeah, you look fantastic. Uh, snap into a Slim Jim. Look at these, I mean, these guns on me. It's a great costume. Actually, like, can, I, can I even fit in this bad boy with oh. the guns on? I mean, yeah. Oh, oh look at that. Francis uh, Ngannou, the Predator. I mean, we'll see. UFC approved. Um, I, didn't, I don't know how to bookmark anything. You've seen this yourself. I don't have a single bookmark tweet. Uh, this was all your work. Not too hard to find. And so, yes, it was beautiful. It was a great moment. You know the story by now. He goes in there as cool as can be. He 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 owned the moment. It was an insane scene. It, there was a two-hour concert. The ring came up from the ground. 
all this stuff. And then, uh, in the, and in the end, uh, the fight starts and, and Fury's a little bit aggressive, right? But Francis is able to weather the storm. He's not, he's not, he's not biting on any of the feints. You know, it's almost like he didn't know any better. So Francis is doing his usual dance. He's not biting on any of that stuff. He's calm. He's not overextending. He's not getting, you know, he's not getting, um, he's not getting too like excited. He loses the first round, in my opinion, but these were all very close rounds. Every single one of them was close, except for the third. He wins the second round, in my opinion, and then it's a 10-8, and then it's a holy shit, and it's that moment right there where he drops him, and he dances in front of him, and now you're like, is this actually happening? Is this the second coming of Buster Douglas and Mike Tyson? I mean, these snaps right here are surreal. Francis Ngannou, who everyone said is going to get carried, who doesn't have a chance, who's going to lose in the second round, who's going to lose in the third round, who may even lose in the first round. Look at that training footage. Look at how you know awkward he is. Look at how slow he is. Is this guy trolling? All this stuff. He goes in there and he drops Tyson Fury. And there's a case to be made that maybe he got too excited at that point and maybe uh, didn't stick to the game plan. But it wasn't like that was the last round that he won. Again, I thought he won the fight. Uh, Tyson was able to get back, you know, on track, landed a nice, uh, elbow in the sixth round, eighth round, Francis, uh, rocks him again. It was incredible. I was, I was, I was captivated. I was riveted. I was glued to the screen. I couldn't get enough. I truly could not get enough of it. It was, uh, I mean, it was one of the greatest things that I've ever seen. And again, I couldn't care less that he didn't get the decision. Would it make it nice? Would it make it clean? Would it make it easy? Absolutely. But he won the match, he won the fight, he won the night. And and the boxing media now is doing the whole thing where, you know, Francis, excuse me, Fury uh, looked like crap. He didn't look like himself. Oh, he was out for too long. Very little giving Francis credit. Like, the reason why Fury looked bad, in my opinion, was because of Francis. He told us he had a 12-week training camp. He was giving him all the credit in the world. He built him up. He did a great job of building him up. That's good. That's what you should do before a fight. You should tell his brother... That's what you should do before a fight. Francis, because of how different he is, because of how strong he is, Fury's trying to clinch with him. He's throwing him off. He's literally taking his arm and throwing him off. He's switching stances. He's going to southpaw on him. Big Francis going to southpaw on, on Tyson Fury. He doesn't know what to do at that point. He wasn't expecting that. Goes in there and freaking pulls off one of the great performances in the history of fighting. What a moment with all those famous people, the eyes of the sporting world watching him, who cares if they were paid or not to be there? They were there watching this guy who everyone said fumbled the bag, who showed up on fight week with a bag that actually said fumbled the bag. He trademarked that. Gimmick fight promotions. You got Michael Buffer out there reading gimmick fight promotions. I mean, there's the bag right there. Ah, uh, this guy laughing all the way to the bank. How could you, even if you were wrong, even if you were on the other side of this whole argument, how could you not appreciate this? How could you not appreciate this victory for this guy who grew up with nothing, who escaped poverty, who escaped death multiple times, who was homeless? How could you not appreciate this? How could you not root for this? How could you not want to see how this story plays out now? 2024 is going to be fascinating for this guy. Oh my God, it was amazing. It was amazing. I'm still buzzing over here. I'm still buzzing from, you know, the culmination now, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys right now, it's the it's the story of the year. It will win my award for story of the year because of how long it it, uh, it went on for. Because of how long it went on for and, and because of, you know, how much shit this guy had to, you know, had to listen to over the past year. People doubting him, people dismissing him. Let me ask the guys what they thought of it because I've been talking now for 45 minutes and in 15 minutes time, we're going to be joined live from the kingdom of Saudi Arabia by one Francis Ngannou, and I can't wait for that conversation. Oh, it's going to be so great. It's going to be fantastic. New York, Rick, you watched the fight. Yeah. You watched the fight. L yesterday on text, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm being consistent. We were going back on the scoring and whatnot. I said, I don't even care about the scoring. The scoring yeah. doesn't matter to me. This man won the fight because n the, the, the usual rules of boxing do not apply in this fight, in my opinion. And so... If you look at that fight and you watch it and you for, you don't even know what 10-9 is, who won this fight? Who It was called the Battle Pride of the Bats. Who won this fight? Francis Ngannou, right? Pride rules, yeah. Pride rules. Yeah. Agree? I agree that, that, that he won the fight in those rules, but I don't agree that he won the boxing fight. Mm, yeah. But uh, 
I don't care. I don't care about that. Good. We talked we talked about Islam Makachev. We talked about Alex Volkanovsky, and we talked about, like, did Alex look his best? I don't care about that that time, and I don't care about it this time either. I don't. Tyson Fury, as the lineal heavyweight champion of boxing, should be able to beat Francis Ngannou under any circumstances. And the, and the betting public and everybody else reflected that reality, and Francis Ngannou bucked that. So I, don't, I ultimately don't care what the scorecards read um, because I think Francis Ngannou won, won public opinion, right? He won in the court of public opin- opinion regardless of what the scorecards will say. And Tyson Fury will carry that. He will not be happy walking away with whatever the victory said on the judge's decision because he will carry that he let Francis Ngannou do that to him and Francis Ngannou was able to do that to him so ultimately I don't think the scorecards matter much um, in this regard now for Francis's side certainly he will believe he won and it should it would be nice for him to win but I don't care about that I don't care about how Fury looked I only care about what ultimately Francis was able to do and for my money that was one of the most impressive performances I've seen in combat sports and by the way like I think we can isolate this fight in a vacuum and just because of what the expectations were, right? I think the doubt was essential to this. I think the idea of the Usyk fight being booked ahead of time is essential to this. We talked about it at the time that it was, that it was made. I thought that this would help promotionally. Now I did not don't by no means am I saying I foresaw what happened here with Francis Ngannou coming, but I think that helps the story, right? He was counted out in every conceivable way and was able to have this type of performance. And I think that's essential to the story. But it was it was one of the most impressive combat sports performances I can remember. And not only that, if you go back to his last three, the last three fights, the last three performances by Francis Ngannou, ruined knee coming back after being down two rounds to win the last three rounds in a wrestling affair against the guy that was billed as the next heavyweight superstar for the UFC. Another performance that like I was I was sitting there on Saturday night thinking, when's the last time I was I was as impressed with the performance as, as I have been with Francis Ngannou against Tyson Fury? And the one that I came up with, there's been some great ones, but the one that I came up with where I saw something from somebody that I just did not know that they had was Francis Ngannou versus Cyril Gan. Was Francis Ngannou on one knee wrestling a decision on Cyril Gan with all the chips on the table, with his his livelihood on the line with his ability to negotiate and leverage this on the line. That was the last time. So he's responsible for two of the last amazing performances that I have all the chips on the table. And then you go to the back, the one even before that, where he looked like a completely different fighter against Stipe Miocic, a guy who annihilated him over the final rounds of his first title opportunity and took him out. Like the last three performances for Francis Ngannou, I'd put up there against anybody who's ever done it in combat sports for a three fight series. The dude has done some truly, truly special things in the last three fights. You can go back to Jarzinho knockout, but I don't think the stakes are as high for those last three as they are for those last three. But man, I was, I was blown away. I'm at a loss for words. I, I'm blown away. I can, I don't have the the capacity to describe what we saw from Francis Ngannou. Great, great, uh, great uh, recap of everything. And um, I'm just so like now I, I love the fact that he's getting his flowers. I love the fact that he's in a position now to command all this money. I can't wait to see how this all plays out. Um, it almost doesn't even matter at this point, right? Because he's got so many options. I just can't. Oh, my God. I just can't believe he actually did that with those freaking, you know, cards stacked against him. What was he a plus 800 or something like that? Uh, or a pl- what is he a plus 750 or something something crazy yeah, I mean he was like a plus 800 he was like I mean Tyson Fury was like minus 1600 uh, on the odds and like going back to what Rick said like I really am at a loss for words like I was absolutely floored I couldn't believe it for the first two rounds I was like wow Francis Ngannou is being very competitive here and then when he actually dropped him I was stunned I, I really didn't know how to react like that was the moment where I was like oh my god he really might win this fight and I mean honestly we're handing out receipts I have to uh, you know I have to come clean obviously I had a massive bet uh, on Tyson Fury. I'd had it for a while. I, I really thought Tyson Fury was not going to struggle much in this one. I actually was saying back here in the control room, Frank can, uh, you know, confirm. Uh, they discussed betting Francis Ngannou by uh, decision at like plus 1800. They were like, oh yeah, if you bet $10, you'll win 180. I was like, eh, if you bet $10, you'll lose $10. He's not going to win by a decision, yada, yada, yada. So honestly, I doubted him a ton too. Uh, so to see what he did on Saturday, it was it was truly, truly insane. 
Oh my gosh. Uh, what about the Furies? Uh, I think you were the one that had that tweet, right? In the last two weeks, yeah. John Fury almost yeah. saw his son. Dicey, dicey, to... dicey moments. You could have given that decision to KSI and you could have given that decision to Francis and Ghana, and I don't think people would have been complaining. Both, about it. right? Could you imagine? Yes, easily. I was at, we were at the KSI fight, and then obviously I have now watched the Fury fight twice. I am in the same camp as Rick, I think, from round to round. Tyson won more rounds and moments uh but i mean obviously francis had the bigger and more impactful moments and then obviously he did way more damage to tyson over the long run so if you scored it for him like these are insanely close rounds too if you scored it for him i would have no issue with it and then obviously the ksi one as well it's crazy the the, the, the score i ultimately came up with was 96 93 fury some of those rounds were razor close if i told anybody ahead of the fight that francis and was going to lose 96 93 to tyson fury I had 95, 95. I'd be looked at as a crazy person. Thank and you. yeah, and that's the widest I could conceive it possibly being. Like, it, it could very conceivably be 95, 94, Fury. It could very conceivably be 95, 94, Francis. No doubt in my mind. And the, the, the elbow. Like, you got to bring up the elbow, too. Like, it was a clear elbow that Lance snapped in Ganu's head back. Like, there's a there's a world where you can make an argument to take a point away there. Uh, it, it, if, like, he he rocked him in the eighth. Yeah, that, like, barrage yes. in the eighth round. Like, it started looking like he was going to drop him again there. If he was just a little bit more aggressive, if he was just a little bit more aggressive in the eighth, excuse me, in the ninth and tenth, I think he, he wins this yes. fight, right? And yes. I, I saw some so people crazy. say... <laughs> Those um, were the deciding rounds, in my opinion. I think after eight, it had drawn to a point where whoever wins these final two rounds wins. I saw Imagine. some people saying I saw some people saying that he was uh, taking his foot off the gas. I don't know if that's the case. Very very possible he got tired. He threw a super bad punch. Yeah, it, what was it? The ninth or tenth? It was crazy. It was it, yeah, it was in the ninth. And and by the way, like let's not act like Tyson Fury had a ton of activity going in the ninth and tenth either. I scored those rounds for him, but they were th those those rounds were up for up for grabs, and you could definitely figure out ways to score that for Francis and Ganu. Again, though, as you said, the scoring is so insignificant to this. The scoring is so insignificant to this. What he did was monumental, was historic, was all time. Like I, I, I am blown away by, by what he was able to do in that ring. And I'm right there in the camp with GC. He's owning up to it. Like there's no doubt in my mind that Tyson Fury was going to win that fight heading into it. I, I there was not a, an ounce of me that thought he wouldn't. And to be honest, that's what makes it so special, right? Like the expectation that was that was upon Tyson Fury um, and how easily he was perceived to be able to do this, moving on from this to a new sick fight was a foregone conclusion. And Francis Ngannou played spoiler once again. He he seems to have a knack for for spoiling people's plans uh, and, yep. and <laughs> making like his own. It's like a surreal fight. What, okay, so, okay, so what do you, like if, if you were, um, if you were in charge, if, if you were Markel yep. Martin, Again, another guy who deserves an apology, too. Everybody uh, on Team Francis, everybody involved in this, deserves a victory lap, deserves to say whatever yeah. they need to say. You, uh, Markel, of course, uh, Francis's uh, longtime manager. Eric Nixick is the coach of the year. I could tell you that now. He'll, he'll, <laughs> Dewey Cooper deserves, you know, we, we tend to yeah. give a lot of shine to Eric, but Dewey Cooper was in that corner. You know, the, the Tyson thing, the Mike Tyson thing was, you know, a bit of a marketing thing, but Tyson did a great job being his hype man. Like at the press conference, that was all Mike Tyson. So I have no I issues. I, I have no issues with Tyson's involvement. Um, that scene of them walking out, uh, Nixick, Dewey, Mike, but then the three kings at the yeah. forefront. I mean, the, the images were beautiful. I love what they did with uh, Fury as well. Fury, you know that that scene where he's walking out of the locker room and it's all the boxing legends? So it's hard not to make this into an MMA versus boxing thing because on, on paper, on the surface, it's MMA versus boxing. And let's be honest, MMA typically has not fared well in these moments. I know you could bring up Anderson Silva and... Julio Cesar Chavez, but like all the Jake Paul fights, MMA has not been, uh, you know, doing well. And then, and then, uh, you know, for the most part, you know, like I, I think Connor did fine. Connor did fine. He won those first four rounds. He did fine. Um, there hasn't been a ton of high profile moments, but for the most part, we keep taking, you know, we keep taking our lumps. We keep, uh, you know, we keep having to listen that, you know, the MMA guys can't punch, they can't strike, they don't know how to box, they don't know how to do this. You don't know shit about boxing. You don't know this. You're not smart enough. The MMA media, uh, like, we're the circus guys. We're the ones that cover Misfits and Jake Paul and all this stuff. Uh, but those guys, there's the hoity-toity bunch over there, and they 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 look down. They put, So even though I'm saying it wasn't Francis versus boxing, it wasn't, 
in, in some respects, it was MMA versus boxing one more time. And if Francis would have gone whooped, uh, the crossover fights would have been dead for a very long time, in my opinion. Now it's wide open. Now you've got Mike Perry calling out Canelo. Uh, Suga is calling out Devin Haney. Uh, God knows who else is going to call out. And more people. Why wouldn't Saudi want to put on these events? Why wouldn't promoters want to do this? Because look at the money and look at the attention. And I, I'm hearing that the pay-per-view numbers did very well. Maybe they'll announce it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. So if you are in charge of Francis's career at this point, what do you do? I don't know. What do you do? Um, you you take the biggest possible fight, whatever sport it's in. If you get an opportunity in MMA that is significant, then that's the fight you take. Now, I'm I'm saying all this. I don't know what um, Francis Ngannou's PFL deal says, right? Like, I don't know what what leverage he has in terms of delaying his MMA debut for for this long. Um, but if it is up to him, if it is his choice, you take the biggest possible fight whether that's in the boxing realm or the MMA realm, whoever comes to the table with the biggest possible fight, that is the fight that you take. And it doesn't matter which sport it's in. Do you see? Fury rematch. 100%. I'm 100% with Rick. I mean, at this point, I have really like, there's no like real strong desire to see him only go back to MMA. It's really wherever the biggest fight is. If he can get a name that is just absolutely massive, then of course, let's go back to MMA. But I mean, you're talking about him getting ranked in the top 10 of, uh, you know, the boxing rankings now. And like he can actually start fighting for for belts there. I'm excited to see what he can do against another opponent at the top of the heavyweight division in boxing. So wherever the biggest name, biggest payday, everything, sign me up. Um, I believe Dan Hardy said this on the broadcast on Saturday on TNT Sports. Uh, I did not see this part, but PT told me he did. And if so, I want to give him full credit. To me, the one that feels the biggest is him versus Deontay Wilder, and it's him versus Deontay Wilder in a PFL cage. Um, because MMA, four-ounce gloves. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that would be... Yo, Deontay insane. Wilder, Deontay Wilder oh might God. be the craziest one of the bunch who would do that sort of thing. And now you've got the boxing media who knows all about Francis. Uh, now you've got, you know, the... Uh, you know, the MMA media obviously is all in on this. And now you've got, for the first time, like an actual current boxing great in his prime going over to MMA. That seems to be the thing, no? If you, well, I mean, I think a Fury rematch is going to be bigger. Um, the, and I say that from the perspective that boxing fans, I think, will tra- will not travel to MMA as easily as MMA fans will travel to boxing, right? Like, MMA fans will watch Fury versus Ngannou. Will boxing fans watch Deontay Wilder versus uh, Francis Ngannou and MMA? I'm not sure the answer. I would hope that the answer is yes, and, and I would expect that there's a certain portion, but I'm not... There, You, you talked about it. There's a, there's a sanctimony. There's a purity. There's a, a lack of respect, and I don't know that that would travel as easily, so I would assume that a Fury rematch is bigger, but man, the idea of those two throwing hands with four-ounce gloves is is tasty. It's I mean, tempting. what do we even do there? Do we just make it one untimed round until someone gets knocked out? Like, it's just like, how long does that even last? Like, two of the biggest power punchers of all time uh, getting in and going at it with four-ounce gloves just sounds, I mean, absolutely insane. That that Now that you've even put this idea in my head, that's... <laughs> The fight. That's the one that I think is I mean, most interesting. Be... It's like the evolution of this fight, right? It's the it's it's like okay, reverse, he's staying. Yeah. Yes. Honestly, and I want to see, I want to see like, like Francis's chin. If I'm not mistaken, he's never been knocked out of his MMA career, and he was just not even phased by anything that Tyson Fury threw at him. Like, I, I really want to see his t- chin get tested against a guy like Deontay Wilder. Like, here's, that would just be. Here's woo. an important question: If you're Deontay Wilder, are you looking at that fight against Tyson Fury and thinking, "Yeah, I don't know if I want to fight this guy anymore." Now, oh, it's so big. I'm not Deontay, ver, Deontay versus Francis is bigger than Deontay versus AJ. Agree or, or, or agree? Or agree for sure. Um, just just because of the auras around both of them and their knockout power. What if what if Tyson Fury goes close. and gets undisputed and then they rematch it and it's actually with the belts on the line? Oh my god, yeah. he's Usyk gets undisputed and then they rematch it. Fury, like, all right, I'm really gonna put 100% into it this time. I know I can get him again. Huge payday, belts on the line though. And Ghana would obviously take it. I mean, there's there's a lot of options right now for for Francis and Ghana. Okay, so uh, while I was uh, going through my whole diatribe, I I, I kept getting phone calls, um, and then I looked at my phone because it was popping up on my computer over here, and uh, then I looked at my phone, and then I was a little bit distracted while we were doing all this because I was trying to coordinate uh, everything going on. In a, in a, in in five minutes, we're going to be joined by Francis and live from Saudi Arabia. But there was one man who was mentioned 
multiple times all weekend who was responsible for putting together this fight and is responsible for everything that is going on from a sports and entertainment perspective in uh, Riyadh for Riyadh season. Uh, he is His Excellency Turkey Al Sheik, and uh, he said to me that he wants to come on the show right now to uh, say a thing or two. And so let us go to Saudi Arabia for an impromptu conversation uh, with His Excellency Turkey Al Sheik. Hello, Turkey. How are you? Oh, hello, my brother. Salam Thank alaikum. You and, uh, Thank you. And hello for everybody in, in the city with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, yes, uh, I wasn't planning on talking to you. Uh, I saw your number keep popping up on my computer. Francis is about to because join us. I, so I want to know what, I, I, what you I, want to I, say. I see, I see what you said, and I, I have an opinion if you can give me time to tell, talk about it. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, I, I am not surprised what Angano is doing in the fight. If uh, this is uh, something I believe, I believe uh, about Angano as a brother. If I doesn't believe he will give us good fight, I will not put him in the opening of Riyadh season entertainment uh, season. Uh, I believe what uh, Francis Angano can do, and he do a great fight. He remember me uh, the fight between Ali and Norton too. Uh, it is close fight, and uh, Angano deserve it, and uh, he will come to my home after two hours to discuss about the future. Yesterday we we discussed, and I give him a lot of options because I support him in everything. And uh, after two hours we will continue meeting after after he meets meet you. What I need to say, brother, uh, uh, we need as a, as a person like you. We need to have the, the credit for Angano and real season because we, we, we're doing this thing. We ble- believe about this, this fight. And it is not like usually what I said. It is not like YouTuber fight. I don't like YouTuber fight. You like the, you like the MMA more, brother. And I, am, I like MMA, but I like the boxing more. I like, I, I I like both understand. equally. I like both equally, but I cover MMA predominantly here. But, but I think, sir, what we are seeing in Saturday was uh, something amazing. Incredible, yes. And and it will change everything. And I am sorry you are not with us because the, your daughter's birthday. And I hope in the future uh, we can catch with you, inshallah. But uh, what I said, and uh, I think uh, in the couple of weeks, there is important things we will announce about it. And uh, I will give it to you specially, inshallah, in the time, only for you. I appreciate that. As, as, thank you. Uh, it will be clear from today. I will talk with Angana about the future. And, and, and in a couple of weeks, we will announce all the map for Riyadh season and what we have uh, in the fight section. I love that. And, and by the way, for the record, I, I've never said that you didn't believe in him or that the kingdom didn't believe in him. Yeah, no, I know. I, I know. think that I, I know. without you, probably mm. doesn't happen. This fight doesn't happen because Tyson doesn't get the payday that he wants and Francis doesn't get what he wants. So uh, I, I believe that strongly. I wasn't talking about you. I was talking or or anyone that you work with. I was talking no, about the doubters. But I want to, to the say doubters. to you something, sir. Yes. I, I want to say, and this is important thing. I cannot talk about you, but I, I cannot talk about myself. I work for the countries, yes, but also I have a salary for it. Uh, no one work without money. Uh, uh, that mean uh, it is not only about money, but the money is necessary for a lot of things. Okay, uh, of course, uh, Tyson have a big contract. I'm gonna have a big contract, but we have big uh, night in our country and at the, uh, the opening of Riyadh season ceremony. And I think it will be one of the most Big pay-per-view ever. Uh, I just have the numbers of Dazan, and Dazan uh, doesn't cover all the world, doesn't cover in this fight, especially in America and UK and Australia and the Middle East and Africa. Okay? The Dazan is more than 200,000 subscribed, just Dazan, more than 200 subscribed. Okay? I think, I think, and I hope we will uh, uh, be the most watch it, pay-per-view fight ever. Uh, and I will give you the number in the right time. 
the, the money is important, but the money is not everything. And of course, you see around more than 70 legends come to the fight in the, in the, in the boxing and the UFC uh, 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 field. Uh, this is the first time they, uh, this number has been there, but I, it was necessary to me to have meeting with them to talk about our vision, the, uh, the, the, the crown prince, God bless him, vision 2030 about the, our country and about the vision of the entertainment and reality section, uh, season section uh, about the boxing and the fight field. Uh, I, need, I need the legend. And yesterday we were opening Mike Tyson gym and I will send to you the videos and the pictures. And inshallah, in the future, I will meet you in London or in New York. I know you are in New York and discuss about a lot of things. What in the end I want to say to you, brother, uh, you are a great man in, uh, in the broadcast field. I like you a lot and I, I like your program. For that, I want to, uh, to have uh, with you, uh, sharing with you some ideas in the future, inshallah. Okay, I appreciate that very much. Uh, very kind of you to come on and congratulations on a great event. Uh, like I said, I had a bit of FOMO. I don't know if you know, FOMO is like fear of missing out. I was a little bit sad that I wasn't there on Saturday because it seemed like such a big event and I saw all the great uh, boxing legends. We have, the future, we have the future, my brother. Yes, so I look forward Together. to that. Um, and so thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Can I ask you one last question and then we'll get to Francis who's standing by. Will, will Francis okay. Ngannou's next fight be in Saudi Arabia? I give him yesterday the, or, the, 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 the contract and the offer. And he's he his man he's having his decision by himself, and I am waiting today today the meeting with him uh, to discuss what he want to do. Okay. I give him the the options yesterday in the table, and it is his call now, not me. And will Fury Usyk be uh, December twenty third, or is it going to be a different date now? This is one of the secrets okay. I want to share with you okay. in the future. Okay. Uh, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Congratulations. And uh, enjoy uh, the WWE event this weekend, uh, Crown Jewel. And on the say, say, say hi for everyone in the studio with you. I will, I will do that. Uh, Mysterious Frank is a big fan of yours as well, so I will do that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Salam alaikum. Thank you. Bye. There he is, uh, His Excellency, Turkey Al Sheikh, joining us uh, live from uh, Saudi Arabia. Guys, Frank, are you excited about all of that? Super excited. Yes. Okay. Uh, let us uh, now go to Francis Agata, who we were just talking. Uh, maybe we could get an answer before their meeting. I, I hear they're having a meeting. Uh, that was very impromptu. And uh, this is a crazy, crazy sport and a crazy time and a crazy show. But everyone's watching it. Let's go to the man right now. Let us stand up and pay homage to the man who shocked the world on Saturday, Francis. And God, I can't believe he's in front of Francis. I'm going to come up to the screen right now. And give you a big old hug. You did it, Francis. You did it. You did it. Oh my God, it's unbelievable. Thank you, thank you, Ariel. Thank hey, you, Francis. You see what I put up on the wall here? Look what I put up. Immortalized forever. The moment. Awesome. You see that? Oh, that's cool. On the wall. You stole for, my idea. Uh, I don't know about your idea, but I put it up there, my friend. So we never forget it. We never forget it, Francis. We just that's had. Also, my friend. His Excellency just called into our show. Crazy. What a time. Francis, I don't know if you heard any of that, but we, uh, we're going to get to you. Can you describe what the last two days have been like for you, less than 48 hours removed? Can you even put into words, seeing this whole thing come? I mean, I see you're tired. Probably you haven't slept too much. What has it been like for you since uh, Saturday night? It's been uh, exhausted, <laughs> exhausting. I haven't really slept uh, since Saturday night, but a lot of message, a lot of calls, um, good stuff, you know. Um, I haven't really like come down. The adrenaline is still coming down, you know, uh, from the fight. But I think I'm still processing. Was that the greatest night of your life? Is that what? Was that the greatest night of your life? Uh... I mean, yeah, with the decision, a little different. Yeah, it would have been, it would have been the greatest. 
you know, with those judges um, being uh, quite fair, it would have been. I mean, you 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 can't really. I'm, I, you can't really think greatest with the little slightly taste of bitter because for some reason I feel like there was an injustice there. So you said, you know, you were so confident going into the fight, Francis, but I'm just wondering, like, did you exceed your own expectations? Did you think that you would do that well against them? Or was this even better than you dreamed of? I know that I could have, I could have done that. Um, you know, I train a lot. I train uh, for four months for this fight. So I have been uh, doing 10 rounds. I have been working on my boxing. And I, I I know that I can even do better than that. You know, um, the I think didn't have to. I should have maybe start training earlier. Um, because like the... Um, when you switch from from boxing to MMA, you go to MMA. I think MMA boxing is quite different. And then when you get to the boxing training camp, then that's when you realize that it's very different. Like little thing, little things has changed, and then it takes time to like work those uh, reflex and those uh, techniques. And then uh, in that perspective, I think uh, I was a little uh, behind. I was in shape. Everything went uh, went well. Had a little, little injuries along the along the way, but not not a big deal, right? So, I was in shape physically, but you know, I think like uh, technically, I think I could have be better if I have trained uh, more. But I, that will help me for the next fight because now I gain this experience, and then I will get, uh, when I have another fight, I will get in this, uh, another training camp, and then just have a add-on, just have to add on when I, what I have uh, had in this fight. But at the same time, was so little nervous though, because you question yourself about like, okay, regardless, I never been in the fight, in the actual boxing fight, like how would it feel? How would I handle this with the pressure and everything? You know, with the lights, how would it be? It was good. It was good. <laughs> you're so. It, what blows me away is you're so you're so like relaxed about it all. It was good. Like Francis, you're the most talked about fighter in the world right now. Everyone wants to be in business with you. For the past year, I just did a whole thing on the show talking about everyone who was shitting on you the whole year. Everyone was saying you're you're screwing up. You're screwing up. BKFC one championship. You no one. And now you're on top of the mountain and you're just like, yeah, it was good. It was all good. You recognize this, right? You're the most talked about, sought after fighter on the planet right now, more so than anyone else. Francis, they're all talking about you and they're talking about you in glowing terms. You recognize this, yes? Yeah, I agree. I agree with that. I mean, it was great. It was more than good. I just have a slightly bitter taste about it. Um, like, it could have been with with a, with a victory, mm. you know. I mean, I didn't, I wasn't going there just to show up, you know, just to like, oh, I'm here, look at me here. No, I really went there to win the fight. And uh, maybe some people might uh, haven't seen that, but that was my real intention. And I really worked hard for it. And I think I deserve that, that victory. And um, I and I should have been celebrating that victory mm. now. So so while people like me are saying you won the fight, moral victory, all that stuff, the competitor in you is is not really saying that, right? You're not feeling that you you wanted the dub. You weren't just coming to show up, is what you're saying. And while you can be pleased with how you did, ultimately, do you feel like you were robbed of a victory? Yes. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy with what I did. I mean. Um, I'm happy with my performance. Um, I'm happy with uh, what all we we did together with what everybody in my team did because um, we get a biggest team this time and everybody put in a hard work uh, for us to get here. Um, again, the competitor in me, um, basically after that performance, you would have hoped for the judges to be fair right and to have that victory mm. because I, I think like i really believe that i won that fight 
I watched that fight again, and now I'm like, I don't understand how I lost. But I, but we knew, we knew that if we get to the decision, it's gonna be tough. Not only because the fight gonna be tough itself, but also because you know there is a lot on the line for the boxing community, for politics, for people inside there. They're gonna protect it, and then that's what they did. Like. You listen to the I listen to the scorecard. Um, I mean, there are people that like um, Juan Carlos uh, Pele Hugh, or what is that? Um, that I, even Alec Alan that I want to ask like, okay, what exactly make make you score like that? Uh, what which fight were we scoring? You know, like were you watching another fight on your monitor, monitor or? Were you watching the actual fight, right? So, I mean, in in the octagon, I didn't really know. You know, I, I feel good about. Uh, I'm like, okay, maybe. But I went back and watch and watch. I'm like, no, I think there is not a way that a judge, basically the one that scored, I think was 93, 96. I'm like, what the hell was that, right? And in fact, like. I'm having my next my fight next time. Those two guys, they don't judge my fight. I don't care. I'm not here in the boxing um, regulation. Like, oh, we want to do this, we do this. No, you are not. You are not fair. You are not fair. By the way, so that's how I think. Old habits die hard. Mm. You said in the octagon just moments ago. Uh, you meant in the ring, but uh, it's 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 been a long time that you were fight, you were talking about in the octagon. You were feeling this and that. You said octagon, not ring. So it's an old habit. Um, so that's funny. You just you just said that. You said in uh, you know because of the whole history. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it happens. It happened to me a lot. Yeah, I know that I have that problem. Um, do you <laughs> yes, I said that in the uh, in the ring. Right, I mean, I mean the ring. Uh, Tyson Fury, do you think he underestimated you? Do you think he looked past you? Mm, I think so. I mean, I know he 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 was training properly, but he 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 was training against something that he really didn't know. You know, in this case, it was hard for him to have that whole motivation. Me, I have a motiv I had a motivation. I know what I was going to deal with. I know the mountain in front of me. So I wasn't joking. I know that if I slip one uh, past one minute, uh, I'm going to pay for it. I knew that's going to happen. It's going to be a huge uh, punishment if I did something wrong. But he didn't know. I think he didn't know clearly. He he just knows that. Oh, okay. There's this guy that has a power that this MMA guy who can land some punch, punch named Francis Ngannou. But he didn't know that I can fight. In fact, I think he wasn't just him. I mean, I can blame him. Blame him because everybody was like that. Oh, Francis Ngannou can do three rounds. Can do this. Can do blah 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 blah. And then that shit almost get in my mind. Like I I barely was there almost fighting. I'm like, okay, am I going to do this? Like, how am I feeling? You know, basically, then he was after the eight rounds, and I'm like, which round is this? Eight. Went to the ninth round. I'm like, okay, how, how are you feeling? The ninth round, I was just about, like, feeling myself. Am I tired? Can I move? You know, I don't want to lose focus on this. And uh, we get in the tenth round. I'm like, yeah, just like in the gym, I can't do this. Like, I feel good. It's 10 round, only three minutes left. Why step on your feet, keep your position, uh, keep your push, push to high, go. And then, yeah, I'm like, maybe I should put my feet on the gas a little bit more. Do you wish you did more in those because last two rounds? From the first round, I was... Huh? Do you wish you did more in those last two rounds? No, I mean the entire fight. Yeah, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I mean the entire fight. Because from the first round, I'm in the first round, I'm thinking already round 10. Ah. I'm in the second round feeling that I'm like thinking round 10. So, and so for some reason, I'm holding it back a little bit like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know how I'm going to feel there. You know, I've never been here. How is it going to be? 
you know, all those lack of experiences was, was playing against me. I'm like, don't over uh, extend yourself and then gas out. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like, you know, but I think next time I'm going to be different because I have a little bit of a feeling, a, f- a feeling of it. I put my finger in the water and I have, I now know the temperature. Uh, I, you, you had a great video on your YouTube channel, Francis Ngannou YouTube channel. I urge everyone to check it out. But you told a story right before the fight started of something that Tyson said to you, and then you got him back when you knocked him down. Can you tell us that story? <laughs> this is incredible stuff. Yeah, I mean, we were there, and then uh, there were uh, the referee was giving us like uh, the recommendation and everything. I he was like, okay, if you guy want to touch glove now, touch and. We touch glove gently, and then here I'm like, let's. I think what let's take you to school, something like that. I'm like this fucking guy. He has no idea what I'm here to do. <laughs> he really like that. Really pissed me up a little, a love off a little bit. I'm like, there's not a respect here. <laughs> and then you drop him. So that's why, like, uh, after 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 the knockdown, I'm like. You you are you are a bad uh, you are a bad professor. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you're not. Some <laughs> how 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 is that school going? You know that was incredible. And then you're dancing in front of that him, was, Francis. That, that was that was the reason that, that was the reason behind behind my dance because I had it. I, I wanted to let it go, and that was the moment that I let it go. Uh, do you feel like you could have had him in that moment? Do you wish that you could have done something differently? Did you feel like you had him on the brink of defeat? Listen, this was my first fight. Um, there's a lot of, like, I could have, I should have stuff, you know. But uh, one thing, this was my first experience. Uh, and again, even from round one, I was thinking of, like, maybe I should, uh, like, be careful. I mean, I was thinking about round 10. Right. Because I didn't know how I would feel in the round 8, round 9. Now I know in a real fight, you know. And he looks tired too. He looks tired too. Like, bro, I wasn't that bad. Hmm. My condition wasn't that bad. Um, I was there. I was. Hey, as I said, I can do this shit. <laughs> was it, was it, and I think a lot of people are now in trouble. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. And I want to ask you about the now, but I'm just wondering, was there ever a point all week or during the fight where it was overwhelming? You're like, look at all the famous people that are here to watch me fight. From going from, from a place where everyone was like, no one cares about Francis anymore, to every great living boxer on the planet, to superstars in football, music, they're all here to watch you fight. Was that ever overwhelming for you that it, it became such a big deal? No, it wasn't overwhelming. I was there myself as a as a fan, as an attendant, you know, uh, as a fan for the event, as the attendant for the event. So I was enjoying it myself, you know. I try not to put so many, so much pressure on me now. I mean, I'm still a competitor, and I'm and when I go out there. I really go out there to give it all, but I don't. I think I have done quite enough, and I don't have that pressure. On like, okay, what happened if I if I fall? You know, uh, I know that I can fall along the way, but uh, I don't want the fear of falling holding me back from fighting. You know, so those people were there because we make this fight happen, and the reason why we make this fight happen. Certainly because we we have done something, both of us, Tyson and I, we have done something uh, in our past to uh, deserve this position. So that we are not that we are not bad already, right? But I still want that plus. Mm. It, it's never enough. I still want that plus. And uh, no, that wasn't, that didn't, I didn't, that didn't overwhelm me at all. Okay. Um, so let's talk about what, what is next. Yes. Although, although Although I didn't want to embarrass myself. Sure, sure. I'm like, no, I'm not embarrassing myself here. Like, <laughs> I'm not just here um, to take part of the show because 
I was listening to many people. Like, I had a lot of interview. Man, and some of them were stupid. People, some uh, reporter was asking me a question like, yes, do you think you can really box Ty Tyson? Uh, let's put fighting aside. Like, uh, uh, okay, we know you can fight and knock him out. I'm like, doesn't matter. Whatever you do and land your punch in somebody's chin is fighting, bro. Stop doing do, doing me that. Stop doing that to me, you know. They wasn't giving me, respect me at all. Yes, I'm <laughs> happy you say that because I listen to a lot of the boxing media and they call you a novice. They call you someone, they say someone who's never fought before. And that to me blows it. Like if they, if I was fighting Tyson Fury, you can say that. But you have fought before. You may not have fought in the box that they are talking about, but you have been in a fight, you have taken a punch, you have landed a punch. So the disrespect was driving me nuts, let alone them announcing the Usyk fight before your fight as we talked about last week. But now, so now I want to ask you the questions that everyone... Uh, wants the answers to. If it was up to Francis Ngannou right now, which sport do you want to compete in next? Boxing or MMA? Hey, combination. I'm competing in both. But which is the next there one? Is not, there is not... A, the next one, I don't know. Okay. I don't really know. Uh, as Chuki uh, said earlier, the, um, they get some proposal that uh, I... Um, I talk with my team and we're going to get a response, give them a response earlier. We deeply think about that offer and we're going to respond earlier, uh, so, uh, soon. Uh, can I ask you what the offer is? <laughs> nah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> uh, there... what, what, whatever, if it's something that you're going to know, you're going to know. Okay. Don't you worry. All right, all right. I had to ask. <laughs> I had to ask. Uh, a lot of people are saying, please don't go back to MMA. We want to see Francis against Deontay Wilder, Anthony Joshua, Gilles Zhang. Like, we want to see Francis Ngannou, the boxer now. Do you understand why people are saying that? And do you share that assessment? Because you've wanted to box for so long. At this point, you've been there, done that with MMA. Is there a part of you that just wants to focus on boxing? Well, um, I'm in the same position that I was. People... I the one that changed because they, they didn't know that I could have I could have boxed. Now their mind is changing because now they believe that I can box. They are surprised. I'm not surprised. Mm. So my mind is saying the same thing. When I signed the PFA deal, I know that I could have boxed. I knew it wasn't like something that I was doubting. And still now it's, I'm still in the same mindset and I still intend to fight. In MMA, obviously, I still want, I really want to fight, have a lot of fight in boxing. Again, as I said, I think a lot of, I can give a lot of uh, boxing guy um, a bad night. Uh, if, if MMA is next, I think the biggest fight for you in MMA, I said this before you came on, is you versus Deontay Wilder in MMA. Because it continues the story of... MMA versus boxing, all the boxing guys will follow, but now we have a guy who comes over to MMA from boxing. What do you think of that idea? I think that's a good idea. In fact, we have spoken ab about that. Oh, In fact, that has been in the discussion. Okay. So that's something that can potentially happen. So um, Deontay Wilder for a couple months, I mean, for a little while now, been training MMA. Oh, really? So, oh yeah. Because there is an option here. Nothing is said, but it's been something been coming out to my ear, to my attention. So that's something that makes sense. Wow. I think, and he's really, because he's really serious about the MMA. Um, I know a lot of people talk, oh, I'm going to do this in boxing and do that in MMA, but I think... Deontay Wilder is very interested in MMA and even like just to step in the octagon for MMA and MMA only. So, but again, it's going to be hot. It's going to be a different base for him. Mm -hmm. unlike, unlike this time that I was the one experiencing the mountain, climbing the mountain, he's going to be the one climbing the mountain because, uh, you know, we watched this, we all watched the fight last, um, last Saturday. But, uh, so you have a, I mean, Tyson try some takedown. I think I tried some takedown, some clinch, and uh, even some elbow. But if it was an MMA fight, it would have been in deep trouble. Uh, 
<laughs> I saw the elbow, yes. Uh, can I ask, why isn't Francis versus Tyson 2 being discussed? I feel like that's a bigger fight now than than Tyson versus Usyk. Why isn't that on the table? Hey, I think because the I think because they underestimated me earlier and then step out and sign a Usyk fight. Mm. And now that I'm like, oh, they, they basically a little bit have a hand, their hands tied. And in fact, I'm not sure if that Usyk fight is happening or uh, anytime soon because I don't think he's in the position to um to fight in December. I mean, I saw I saw a picture of him. I'm like this guy is not fighting in December. Like, even me, I'm not uh, hurt, but I'm not fighting in December. But uh, him, even less, right? So, and then, but I want him. When they announce that, I'm like, bro, I don't know what is the um, uh, medical um, recommendation in boxing, but I'm not just sure about your fight with music. I put that out on Twitter, but again, they underestimated me. Right. That has to feel good, right? Because <laughs> they announced it before. We talked about that, and now you have pushed it back. Uh, that has to be a, a, another small victory for you. It was a victory for me anyway because I was the first to be served. I was always the first to be served. Mm -hmm. that, that fight never, for me personally, I never think that fight would be on my way. I was on the way of that fight. And in fact, I affected that fight, but that fight didn't affect mine. At, at any point, Francis, throughout the whole year, did your confidence go down? Like, I just went through all these things of people doubting you. Did you ever waver? Did you ever regret? Did, was there ever a point in your, in, in, your, in your brain where you said, maybe I should have taken the UFC deal, maybe I should have stayed, this was a mistake? Did you ever for a second doubt yourself or your decision? Hmm. You have to understand something. Like things are playing out for me perfectly. I mean, maybe even more than uh, anyone expected. But let me tell you this. Let's say after the UFC, uh, for uh, after working out from the UFC, I didn't have any of those contracts, whether it's uh, MM is a PFL contract or a Tyson Fury fight contract. I wouldn't regret. You know, it wasn't an overnight decision. It was a decision that I thought about it. And I was like, okay, hey, I thought about it many times. And I was telling people, if you ask Michael, Michael will tell you. I was telling him like, bro, if if this means I'm going to go back uh, in Cameroon and farm, I'm going to go back and farm. I love farming. But it's, it has to be on my term. You know, like I'm not doing what I don't want to do just uh because, I mean, just to please somebody. No, I don't do that. I can't do that. It's just uh, beyond my uh, capability, you know. Never, never regret. But I think things been playing out even better than I, have, uh, I expected. I couldn't even script this out, this so beautifully. Why would I regret? Everything be good. I was like, why did, didn't I do this earlier? Why did, did, I, uh, did I even try so hard? Why did I even put so much energy into a relationship that wasn't working, right? Sometimes you just have to let him go. When it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Move on. And potentially, you're going to find your, your place uh, somewhere else and even better. Uh, but no matter what, you're going to be in, in, in peace with yourself. So I was in peace in myself. I'm in peace in myself, and I would have been in peace in myself either way because I do not regret my decision. I do not take my decision to hurt anybody. I do not take my decision to please anybody. I thought about my decision, and I took it based on what I want and based on my principle. How do you think Dana White feels about what happened on Saturday? Who cares? They know what feel like. They know what I feel. I feel like I feel. Personally, I feel great. I think you have to send him an invite so you could ask him. <laughs> I would like to know too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what? Okay. So, what would you say to Dana if you saw him now? What do you think you would say to him? Uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know. Why would I say something to him? Hmm. 
Do you think do you think he's I happy have, for nope. you? I have hmm? Do you think he's happy for you? We have to ask him. Hmm. But I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure though. I'm not sure because he's been throwing little stone on my way like this little like trying to talk me like <laughs> you didn't you, you didn't no, want the tough fights. You were you were you were looking for easy fights. You were looking for an easy situation, you know? All that stuff. Uh, we can we can hold it hold it um uh hold it uh up into that. We we know Dana is Dana. He said what Dana said and Bush does uh, most of the time mean anything. <laughs> uh I'll let you go. Um, to... Yes. So you mean like like a lesser fighter like Tyson Fury, right? Yeah, exactly. That's what I want. Yeah. He was right. A lesser fighter like Tyson. And and let's be honest, in John Jones too was saying you were looking and, and look at you now, right? A lot of people were throwing mm -hmm. stones your way. It wasn't just Dana. I know he gets a lot of the attention, but a lot of people weren't backing you. Fighters weren't backing you. And that to me was the, the part that bothered me the most. Fighters. No, but, no, no, but you have to understand uh, Dana have, has the power over a lot of fighters, you know, a lot, a lot of them, they are just there to please the boss, you know. A lot of them, they don't have their own personality. They don't have their own uh, identity. So they just want to fit in something, and you can blame them. It, take, it costs a lot, and it takes a lot to stand up and say what you think. And some people don't just have it. Some people... And some people just make their, themselves a puppet. It's okay, but I can be anybody puppet. <laughs> I'm too big for that. <laughs> That's right. I'm too proud for that. <laughs> By the way, where'd you get that bag? Fumbled the bag. Who made that for you? That's tremendous stuff. Uh, Leone. Oh, cool. Leone from my gloves. Yeah. Yes. They do some great stuff with leather, and then they just surprise me with that as a gift. Um, they fumbled the bag. Incredible. Incredible. Um, Francis, can I ask you yeah. before I let you go? But yes. Also, speaking of speaking of from the back, the merch is coming out soon uh -huh. because the from uh, the back trademark has been protected since the beginning. I mean, <laughs> I think that was cool long time ago. <laughs> You're gonna come out the with merch? merch? Is coming out. Fumble the bag merch. Yeah, yeah. I love from it. the back is a brand. <laughs> uh, it's amazing. Uh, can, when do you think we'll see you again? My, you know, um, again, from the beginning to now, uh, and then I still consult some of my team today, and our perfect date will be still be March. March, okay. And and most likely it's, it's February or March. February, March, and most likely it's MMA, right? I think no, or is it is it even too soon to say? Well, if Tyson, if Tyson is about to come. Do the rematch in oh. March, then what we push everything away. Oh. We did the Tyson one first. Okay. Is that on the table? No, right now. I think the music fight is on the is on his table. Okay. He has something in his plate. Okay. Okay. Unfortunately. Wow, this is crazy. It's crazy how you have all these options now. You have every Every boxer, every boxer in the heavyweight division, every MMA fighter wants to be a part of the Francis Ngannou business now. How the how the times have changed, right? Yeah, man. You know, you just have to be. Sometimes you just need to be stubborn. You know, sometimes you just have to to gamble and um, accept the take the risk to lose everything. Make sure make your peace. In the in case you lose everything, and if you're gonna be okay with that, that's how you get to big thing. You know, sometimes you need to step back in order to step higher. Mm. Uh, and you did sometime that. Sometimes you need to to put everything on the line. Sometimes you need to put everything on the line to gain more. You you have to risk it. You have to risk something. Nothing gonna be for free. Mm. Um, last thing. Uh, I, I've been focusing a lot on the doubters and the haters and all that, but is there anything you want to say to the people who did back you, who did support you, who did, you know, um, root you on throughout well, all this? Of course. I mean, as always, um, 
I always have a lot of support uh, from people next to me, from friend, uh, friends, family, and uh, even a lot of fans. I, I have a lot of fans even throughout this process that really believe in me. And in fact, some some even believe in me more than I did. In my, I mean, not that I was doubting myself. Some truly believe in me more than I did. And that was very helpful to see like people around still believe like when some when everybody thought he was uh, all lost uh, in the new game that you have no chance. So I'm beyond grateful for that, for for having fans like that, for having friends like that, uh, that believe in me, uh, even in the toughest situation. We all know that this year hasn't been easy. Uh, I mean, since my last fight with the surgery and everything, all the drama, but Man, people that believe in you, believe in you even in the darkest moment in your life. So thank you again. Thank you very much for those. And to be honest, thank you even for the doubter. Thank you even for the haters. Because sometimes I, I, after training, I still get one more round for them. Because I want to. I'm so, I'm like, okay, one more round. And then I'm like. We are done, child. I'm like, one more round, baby. Let's do this. We want, I want to shock them. I want to be the, a fly on the wall and see how they're going to be surprised. So let's get this. So even the, even the hitter and the doubter, they empower you more than they imagine. So I just take the best out of everything. <laughs> Man, you did that and then some, my friend. It was a beautiful thing. And so now you go to, uh, you meet His Excellency and you're going to decide. So you might even decide by the time you leave kingdom or will you go back to you know cameroon or las vegas and like will will you know what you're doing next in the next couple of days um yeah i think i'm gonna go back to cameroon okay honestly honestly i don't know i'm here in uh in the hotel i don't know when i'm leaving uh yet maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow okay <laughs> <laughs> what a life <laughs> but yeah but I might go back to Cameroon and see my family. They left last night. Okay. Incredible. But you will you decide by this week what you're doing? Uh yes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I do have um I do have a lot of um media duty. Mm -hmm. I do have a lot of media in home, um on hold that they are holding it for me. Um I haven't done any media yet. I think this might be my first media since the fight. And then they are pushing, pushing. I really, like, at some point, get a step up and take the responsibility. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming uh, on the show first. It, it really means a lot, as always. Uh, and uh, I'm so happy for you, Francis. Congratulations. I feel like I've said this to you so many times throughout your career. Felicitations. It is such a, it's such a joy. It's such a pleasure to watch you compete. And uh, what you did on Saturday is something that not only myself, but everyone who was watching will never forget. It's one of those great moments that we will talk about from now until our last days. So thank you for that. And thank you for telling us all, showing us that it's okay to dream. It's okay to take a chance. It's okay to go out on your own uh, in the face of all the criticism and the doubters. It was very inspirational stuff. And I know I'm going to get hate for this and shit. And people say that I back you too much. They don't understand what you've who been cares? through. Who cares? Who cares? It's Don't a real pleasure. It. It's a real pleasure, my friend. So congratulations, and I Thank can't you. wait to see what you do next. Truly, it's uh, it's going to be fun. No, always do you, and let Hater do do them. They will always do them. So don't you let them change what you do, because what you do will not change who they are. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Francis. Bon courage. Safe travels Thank you, home. Ariel. We'll talk soon. Always a pleasure. You're the man. Talk soon. Yes, Bye. sir. Bye-bye. There he is. Francis Ngannou. I mean, unbelievable. I didn't even have the picture up. I took the picture, and then I took it down. Ah, oh, Frankie, what are we going to do with ourselves? What are we going to do? Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Francis Ngannou. Na, 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 na. Francis Ngannou. Ngannou. Francis and Ganu, na 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 na. What do you think of that song? I just made that up on the spot. Beautiful stuff. Great all right. Song. Uh, so we've just had Francis from the Kingdom join us, and uh, when all of this went down, I said, "Oh, I need to talk to one man, one man only." Sure, he wasn't promoting the event, but he's uh, he's been a sounding board, and he's been quite vocal about this fight and Francis's chances in boxing. And 
Uh, you can never say that Eddie shies down or shies away, I should say, backs down from uh, a little criticism or confrontation. And so here he is, the great Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing, to talk about what transpired on Saturday with a headset now. Let's see if the audio sounds better than last time. Eddie, how are you? Uh, did we lose him? Eddie, are you there? You got me now. You're, you just, you've just just put your sound on. This is not my problem this time. No, this sounds fan- This sounds better. You look great. You look Good. like it's... I've got, listen, <laughs> because my sound wasn't great for you last time, Ariel, yeah. I've taken the liberty of looking like a right plonker <laughs> with a pair of headphones on, like some kind of call center guy, which is, you know, I, it's actually what I used to do in my early years at school. I don't believe Sell that. Sell windows on the phone, yeah. Is that true? True story. Uh, you look like a telemarketer. I don't know if they have that over there. That's but what it, I was. It's the, it's, the, it's the toughest form of sales. If you can sell on the phone, you can sell anywhere and anything. Well, uh, that prepared you, of course, for the life that you uh, you live now. So uh, <laughs> great, uh, great education there. Uh, I, I've seen your clips, obviously. It was brilliant of your team to put out the YouTube clip of you talking about what happened. But now two days later, Eddie, mm. what do you think about what happened? Can you, can you just put, just go ahead. Tell us about what you thought of the scenes in Saudi Arabia. I mean, firstly, like the the job the Saudis did on production, the show, just unbelievable, mind-blowing, you know. Um, going into this fight, I gave Francis Ngannou absolutely no chance whatsoever, no chance whatsoever. Um, so, firstly, you got to give him the respect of... Whatever you want to say about Fury, he didn't focus enough on him. He didn't train hard enough. Probably all of what is correct, he's still the number one heavyweight in the world. And Francis Ngannou has never boxed before. So, firstly, you have to give Francis Ngannou his respect. Secondly, I thought he won the fight. And for a a debutant, to beat the world heavyweight championship champion is just the most unbelievable. And I know he has the respect of people and all that, but he should actually also be walking away with the greatest victory in the history of boxing. That's the reality. I can't believe he did it personally. I still don't think, I mean, it's difficult to say he's not a world-class fighter because I feel like he just beat Tyson Fury, but I look at it now and, you know, we had a meeting, me and Francis, about, I don't know, five, six months ago. And he asked me to make, make the Anthony Joshua fight. And I went back to AJ and I said, look, I've met with Francis and gone. what a lovely gentleman. What do you think? And he went, I'm not interested in, like, I don't like the gimmick stuff. Like, I just want to win the World Heavyweight Championship. So I'm like, okay. Now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, Francis and Garner against Anthony Joshua, perhaps in Africa, perhaps the Rumble in a Jungle 2, is one of the biggest fights in the history of the sport. And I promise you this, respect to Francis, easy work for my man. And I know, I know, Ariel, I know you're getting a little bit high right now. I know the MMA world are just walking in the clouds, but we'll bring it straight back down to reality because, but the things that he did, like the fun, like I've never seen Tyson Fury, he looked petrified. Like he got dropped in the third round. He did not want to engage. He was thrown around like a rag doll in the clinch. Francis did so many basic things well in there. You know, his guard was solid. You know, he caught shots. He, I'm I'm still, you know, obviously you're your community. We're our community. And our community are walking around like this. Like, and you guys are walking around like this. For the first time, right? The MMA community never gets a win over boxing. But you can't, like... That's the most bizarre thing. Crossover fights are not competitive. Like, they're not supposed to be competitive. This is like a boxer that has never fought MMA before going in and not just knocking out a UFC guy, but actually competing with him in terms of, like, I mean, skill. Yeah. (laughs) I can't believe it. So... It's amazing. And, and you know, I, I think I gave him no chance. No chance. And I, I think easy fight for Anthony Joshua. But he just beat Tyson Fury. So I don't really know what to say. Uh, I said it was very disrespectful that they announced the Usyk fight before this fight happened. Tyson, credit to him, on my show on Wednesday, 
agreed with me and said it wasn't his call, it was the promotion's call. And so ultimately, you know, you, you have to you have to concede that. When you found out about that, when you saw that, what did you think as a promoter? Would you ever do something like that? Would you yeah, ever announce yeah, I, would, a fight? I mean, I would say, I would probably say, you know, subject to Tyson Fury winning, there may be an announcement on the night. But like, and this is myself, boxing, Tyson Fury, gave Francis and Garnu no shot. No shot at all. So, and it is so funny because look, I think for, I think Tyson Fury, he he may actually be a faded. I mean, I've you know me, I'm an anti Joshua fanboy, right? I've always believed he can beat him. Oh my god, if I could make that fight now, I am so sure anti Joshua beats Tyson Fury. But anyway, that's another conversation. But with the making of that fight, it's quite funny because Tyson Fury is a clever guy, right? I mean, the fact that he didn't do a press conference after the fight was, you know, he, he likes it his way. Talk sport, want to criticise him, he bans them, right? Has a poor performance, no press conference. He knew that Usyk doesn't really, or say he doesn't really want to fight on December 23rd. He's not really prepared well enough for December 23rd. So he used that to his advantage in the last week, saying, Usyk, you better be a man of your word. We're contracted to fight on December 23rd. You better not pull out. And then, obviously, Usyk knew on the night there is absolutely no way the 23rd could work. And then he calmly gets in, calmly gets in the ring and says, yes, of course, December 23rd. Are you a man of your word? You've been calling it all week. Let's go. And Tyson Fury goes, have a good Christmas all. I'll see you sometime next year. You know, so it's, a, it's an interesting dynamic now. I mean, I said after the interview, it's a bit of a snap reaction that the Usyk Fury fight is dead. It's obviously not dead. It's still a big fight, but the value of that fight has plummeted because really you want to see him rematch Francis and Garner, you know, and I think Francis and Garner now sits there with plenty of opportunities. I still believe I saw some comments today online, people saying, you know, and Garner should come back with a, a follow-up fight with a lower level opponent. Bad idea, really, really bad idea, because there is a chance that he got lucky on Saturday night in some respect. And you can't take away from the performance, but trust me when I say he can get beat by any heavyweight in the top 50 in the world. I promise you, like he can, showing on Saturday, maybe he could beat them. The risk of that, what you have to do if you're in Francis and Garner now is you have to rematch Tyson Fury or you have to fight Anthony Joshua. And, you know, I've, I've been in touch with, with some of their guys and, and people in Saudi Arabia as well. And if Usyk has to fight Fury, which I believe he do, he will, AJ against Francis Ngannou. It is, and the winner fights the winner of the other fight. And, and listen, if Francis Ngannou, I, say, I keep saying beats Tyson Fury, I think he did, but whatever, and beats Anthony Joshua, he should fight for the world heavyweight title in two fights. Like, you know, so that way you're getting the credibility. AJ against Ngannou is absolutely massive, massive. Two giants next to each other. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen? I can't even believe we're debating this on a Monday morning, but fair play to your boy. He pulled it out of the bag. Oh my he God. didn't fumble it. He did not fumble it. Uh, he, in fact, trademarked that and uh, he, he shoved it down everyone's it. throat. Uh, you think, and I understand, you know, you're, you're his promoter, I suggested before we spoke that the biggest fight for him, if he has to go to MMA, if he has to go back to MMA because he has a deal with PFL, is Ngannou versus Wilder in MMA. That Wilder's the the, the only one who's crazy enough to go over there and do an MMA fight. Let's be honest, Francis isn't going to wrestle him. Not being funny. Have you seen his legs? Like, if if Francis Ngannou kicked Deontay Wilder's legs, they, they would literally snap in half. <laughs> like... It, Wilder, Wilder's a boxer, very dangerous boxer, very exciting boxer, very talented boxer. Listen, the money for Francis Ngannou now in boxing, he ain't going back. He ain't going back. I mean, like, the money that I know that AJ against Ngannou could generate. What could Francis it, get for a fight like that? I, I don't want to put myself in a bad position. A lot more than he got on Saturday. Okay. And so, so why, in your opinion, could you tell us why... Francis versus AJ is a bigger fight than Francis versus Wilder in boxing. In boxing? In because boxing. AJ 
because AJ is a global superstar. Deontay Wilder is a, a solid name, big name in America-ish through the Fury fights, not anywhere near the same level. I mean, you're talking about a two-time heavyweight world champion. You're talking about a guy that has endorsement deals, broadcast deals all over the world. It's a monstrous fight. And you know the mad thing, the really mad thing? When you when the bookmakers price that fight up, they make it competitive. Why wouldn't it they be? Make it competitive. Why wouldn't it be? Because you can't tell me here for a second Aaron, that he's not going to smoke him. You know that. No, but that's what I want. No, I want you sell me the fight, Terry. He's, he's not going to smoke. You tell me Francis and Garner can beat Anthony Joshua. A thousand percent. He will. He will. So you think and Garner will beat Joshua? Not only do I think and Garner can beat Joshua. <laughs> I think you're being incredible. You're doing the same thing that you did. I but, love it. Uh, I love it. Actually, what's it? No, what's no, what's but this is why. No, but all of a sudden, we've gone from a night that's farcical, right? Pre fight on Saturday. That, but that was Many that was you was and AJ farcical. that said that. Absolutely. Yeah. No, you and AJ. AJ. No, no, no. AJ no, said it was me. a gimmick fight. AJ said it was a gimmick fight. Yeah. He, yeah. He's, well, I'm saying he wasn't interested in a gimmick fight when it was proposed to him. He's yeah. not, you know, so, but if, a lot of people's perception pre fight Saturday was that that fight was farcical, right? We are now in a position where we're debating if Francis Ngannou beats Anthony Joshua. Take my money. Yeah. Prove me wrong. And listen, he can punch. There's no doubt. I mean, Fury, I think his resistance isn't what it was. It was a good shot to the top of the head, but nothing major. Take my money and I will show you what happens when Anthony Joshua fights Francis Ngannou. And Ganu lands. I said three rounds on Saturday. But You're insane. You're insane for that. I'll be a little bit more generous. Six rounds. And Ganu lands that punch that he landed in the third round. I don't know if AJ gets off the mat. Oh, Aaron. You're crazy. You're, he just. You beat, know what? I saw one beat. of your tweets earlier. Tell me. Aaron. Tell me. You, you, this is going to be like it's so good. I don't know. It was like talking about how Francis is like. Gen, I mean, like. Yeah. You. Oh, the, I. I see some of the with, boxing people being like. Oh, tell him to go fight Derek Chisora or Dillian White. Are you kidding me? First of all, when's the last time Anthony Joshua truly outboxed and knocked someone out who he didn't fight on five days' notice? When is it? Jermaine Franklin? Well, he did knock him out. He won, he won, the, won every round. Yeah, Jermaine Franklin. I mean, not yeah. exactly one for the highlight yeah, but, reel. But did he knock him out? I mean, don't did, forget, this is a guy that's boxed. White, Klitschko, Parker, Takam, Pavekin, sure. Ruiz, Ruiz, Usyk, Usyk. Yeah, is he you knocking know? them down? Is yeah. he knocking them out? Course, wait. What do you mean, course? Jermaine Aerial. Franklin fight. I, I I thought I was taking a night quill. I thought you're I was talking, going to bed Aerial. watching that fight. Aerial. That was that's this, the fight. This, that's the one that you're going to put on the mantle for, right. for what Francis I will, did. I will give I will give you unbelievable. When we make this fight, right? Oh, I'd love it. The odds that I will give you for Francis and Garner are going literally. You are going to put every property, every <laughs> bank account, cars. Maybe your studio, that laptop, yeah, yeah. anything else you've got in the studio of value, you are going to put it on on this fight with the odds I'm going to give you for this fight. And I'm telling you, Nick, like, but this is what we want. No, it's beautiful. This is what it's we barbershop want. talk, right? That's what we call it here, right? Yeah, People. it is. It is. And listen, I have to give, because I, know, I saw an interview with, with Ngannou, and they all poked the bear. You know, Eddie Hearn said this. He said, Eddie Hearn, what does it know? I give him the respect. You can't not respect what he's done. Like, you can you can say Fury wasn't focused. You can say this. He's gone in there under immense pressure, immense pressure against a guy that is difficult and awkward. And you know, like little just to explain it to, to people that might not follow boxing as much, the little things that Fury does that work with like 99% of boxers just didn't work with Francis Ngannou. Like the feints, the traps that he's set in. And then, and got like I, whether that was brilliance or naivety, it doesn't really matter. But I have to give him respect because he took a few shots early in the fight, seemed to take it well, good chin. You know, he actually he put him down. And listen, it was a close fight. I felt like he won the fight by one or two rounds. Mm -hmm. But still, I, I can't. You know, if he would have won, which probably he should have done, it's just like. It is the greatest victory in the history of the sport. It really is. So I feel a bit for him on that front. And I think Tyson's going to Tyson's gonna find it difficult over the next few weeks because it's going to be on top of him. And he doesn't like that. You know, he, he won't like the criticism. And he'll probably take a break from social media and media and just sort of slip away and say, I'm going to 
just chill and family time and Christmas and stuff like that. But it will hurt him, the criticism, because it's massively tainted his legacy. Uh, we had uh, an impromptu visit from Turkey al Sheikh, the uh, mm. His Excellency. He, he, he called into the show uh, before. Oh, really? Yes, yeah. yes. He just he just came in. Uh, and, <laughs> and he says that there's something on the table for Francis. I asked Francis what this is. Um, he wouldn't say, of course. Are you mm. trying to make AJ versus Francis? Is this is this something that can happen? In yeah, I mean, I, I, I messaged um, Turkey al Sheikh after the fight and I said, this is, I feel like this is the biggest fight in boxing. You know, AJ against Ngannou right now. Do you think AJ um, Ngannou is bigger than Ngannou Fury too? Um, available fight. So that's a good question and a tough question. I think it's a massive fight, mm. Fury and Ngannou too. But the fact that Fury, don't forget the press release we saw, yeah. Fury, Usyk signed. Right, right. Signed. I mean, Usyk ain't stepping right away at this stage with the money he's getting for that fight and saying, yeah, go on, boys, you carry on and have your fight. So, you know, if I'm, if, if he's, I don't know his contractual position in Saudi Arabia, but if it's AJ against Nganu, and of course, in your um, boxing opinion, Nganu wins that fight comfortably, he fights the winner of Usyk Fury, no problem. So everybody wins. Why do you say boxing? I feel like that was a bit condescending. You're, you're trying to say that I don't know what I'm talking about. You see, this is what you boxing no, guys do. You look I down said, on us. Ariel, like, I said, in your boxing opinion. It felt like a bit why of a you, shot. Why are you so touchy? Yeah, it felt, you know why? You MMA guys so touchy. Because we you always know, have to I hear this. Out, yeah. You imagine, Ariel, if yeah. I came in and started telling you about this, the tactics in an MMA fight, you would be looking at me going, what does this boxing guy know? I'm Come not. On. I'm not let's talking not, about the let's tactics. Let's not beat around the bush. I just saw. Let's... I just saw Francis Ngannou drop the lineal heavyweight heavy, <laughs> better fighter than AJ Tyson's a better fighter than AJ, and then I saw him rock him in the eighth round and get robbed of a decision. I just saw Styles, it. Styles, yeah, Styles, hundred percent. I mean, Styles, know, I'm sure that's the same. It's Styles making yes. fights, and and actually, to be honest with you, but to I say it was a three terrible rounds, style for Tyson Fury. three rounds, yeah, that's what I think. Uh, it's so disrespectful. It's disrespectful. How could you make the same mistake? But how can a, how can a, how can an opinion be disrespectful? Because you know, you, you, you think, are telling me, yeah. no, but you are telling me that a guy that you know clearly. Did fight a, a fighter that, that wasn't motivated, but whatever, great performance. How do you know that? You're, you are just that's taking away because, from us. Because because one, I know who he was sparring. Two, I know he's already signed the Usyk fight. And really, all he's thinking about is whatever you do, don't get cut, don't get hurt, get through. And you got December twenty three. You got X ten million, whatever you're going to make, right? So for sure, he wasn't in the same frame of mind that he would be when he's fighting Wilder or AJ or Usyk. But I'm not taking anything away from him gone. I'm just saying, you're now telling me that this guy blows through the division. I never said that. I just said he could he could very he could very well do what he did to Fury. He could do that against AJ, Wilder, Gile Zhang, Chisora, White. All of a sudden he can't beat Chisora and White? Come on. Eddie, you know I'm not sure he can. You're crazy. Sure what? what? Chisora and White? Look what they did to, to Fury. And I know Styles make fight, but they didn't even I'll show what, up. Ch I think actually, Ch I actually think Chisora and, and Garner is a great fight. Come but, on. Why would he do that in a million years? He would never. Styles make fights. Do you realize how tired Francis and Garner was after about five or six rounds? Fury did nothing to press the fight physically. In the eighth round, he, he stunned no. him again. He threw no, a Superman yeah, but, punch. He was dancing on him. He was he was mocking both him. Feet, both feet off the floor. Yes. Yeah, but it's more the physical side. If it's a physical fight, Ariel, you're making a fighter work. He's fighting on the inside. He's trading with you. That's what Tyson needed to do. But he was either fearful of the power, fearful of the cut, fearful of getting beat, that he never pressed the fight. And he let Francis Ngannou fight at a pace that was actually comfortable for him. What Watch, watch his body language fight. Francis, fifth, sixth, seventh round. He was starting to tire, and he did really well himself to to stay stay with it physically in the fight. But you've got to press him. You've got to make him empty the gas. And fighters like Chisora and White are physical fights every time. You know, they're, they're fights where you're in the trenches every round. You're throwing punches. You're getting hit to the body. You're like, they're different kind of fights. Tyson, he didn't do anything. Mm. He was like... You know, every now and again, he'd, he'd throw a loop in right hand, and, and that was it. So, look, again, we can debate it all day long, and it's amazing for it, – it's, it's actually amazing for boxing 
and MMA. People, oh, a lot great. of people are saying it's terrible for boxing. No. Some guys just come in and beat Tyson Fury. It's like, mate, do you know how many people are talking about boxing today? Oh, like, literally, great. I just got back up into the gym. I've been here. Everyone's talking about it. So, and if you're Francis Ngannou right now, you're sitting there as one of the most valuable boxers in the world. And you're all right. He can go back into the MMA world and have a massive fight. Like, he's a huge name. Huge. Good luck to him. Uh, can I ask you this? And I'll just ask you a couple more and then let you go. Um, do you think, I thought, I said, if he gets smoked, if he, if he gets embarrassed in this fight, that's it for the MMA boxing fights. Like, we need to take a break. Now I think the door has been, like, <laughs> thrown wide open and it's going to start all over. We're back in 2017 when Conor fought Floyd. Do you think this is the start of more of these fights or do you think that he just lives in a vacuum and it's not going to no, happen I think, elsewhere? Look, for all the criticism, we keep saying he's never had a professional fight, which he hasn't. Everybody knows. Professional and, boxing uh, now. I, professional boxing. Yes, uh, yes, yes. I, I acknowledge this in the build-up. I know that he, when he came to Paris or from trying to get to the UK, he came to be a boxer. He didn't come to be a mixed martial artist. The boxing was his his love. So he could de he definitely has some fundamentals. Conor McGregor also was an amateur boxer. He has Conor McGregor has boxing fundamentals. I, I really don't think there's many. You'll know more than me, but I'm sure there is another one, two, three, four. I mean, who actually have a boxing background without having professional boxing matches. But I think if you don't. Like, you look at Dylan Dennis the other day, right? Brilliant. He was amazing. But he just doesn't know how to box. That, that, that's not to say, you know, if he was fighting Logan Paul in a cage, he'd destroy him, right? But some people have the fundamentals. Some people don't. You will know those people because you'll see it in the cage, I guess, you know, if someone is actually has a good stand-up game. I mean, the guy who keeps calling out Devin Haney, I can't remember his name. Sean O'Malley. Uh, can he box? I, I have no idea, you know. Um, but is it going to open the door? I mean, what MMA fighters will see is the opportunity to make considerably more money in boxing if you have the profile. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be looking at their existing purses and thinking, wow, you know, it doesn't always work like that. You can't just switch from UFC to, to boxing and make 10 mil. Do you know what I mean? Like, but if you have a massive profile and a big following and you can box, I do think this was a bit of a freak, to be honest with you. But I do think if you have boxing background or ability, you have an opportunity. See, see if you look at someone like Nate Diaz, he is supposed to have boxing pedigree or, or you know, he couldn't beat Jake Paul, right? Like, that's why this this performance was particularly impressive mm. because he didn't just go in there and look okay. Like when Connor boxed Floyd, he said, I love Connor, but Floyd carried him, right? But Connor still did, he, he could he was still good enough to, to compete and look okay, whereas others can't. So listen, you know, I think we have to take it seriously. I think if it's going to, you know, bring attention to the sport and people are good enough because what we want is we want great fights. I thought Saturday was going to be such a horrific mismatch. I don't mind holding my hands up. Like, I really did. I, I really did. I thought it was going to be embarrassing. Do you think there are people at UFC HQ in Las Vegas who are saying, we blew it? Why? Like, it was it was on our network. It was on ESPN. We could have been a part of this. We had the baddest man in the world, on the planet, on our roster, and we let him walk and do this on his own. Do you think they regret this? I think that... Um, they won't regret losing Francis Ngannou as a business. And the reason I say that is because they have their numbers, they have their targets, and and his his demands didn't work within their infrastructure, right? Within their budgets, within their framework, within, within their um, splits. It just didn't work for the business. Are they sitting there looking at Francis Ngannou going and collecting a huge amount of money and becoming one of the biggest combat stars and boxing stars in the world. Yeah, I mean, it's easy to say good luck to him, but let's be honest, we're all competitors, aren't we? It doesn't matter if it's me, if it's Dana. You know, I'm sure Dana's not crying about it, but I think he would also be surprised with what Francis has done. Mm -hmm. And and like him, 
think that his demands were too much, think whatever, you got to respect him because he took the chance, went out there, did his own deal and just rolled the dice and it double six. And he's like probably the best job in the world right now to have is Francis Ngannou's manager. Yes, it is unbelievable. It's, you know I mean? it's unbelievable. Really, really. Is. Seeing everyone uh, try to court him. Uh, last thing, what do you predict happens? What do you, what do you think he does next? I mean, there are only two, if Fury fights Usyk, which you have to think is going to happen, there is really only two mega fights for him. I think one is Wilder and one is AJ. Um, I think I think he does one of them. I really do. I, I, don't, I don't think he's going to want to step back because, and take a smaller fight for less money because honestly, the risk is, is heavyweight boxing as well. Like It's just, it's not worth it. And he did the right thing. You know, when I met him, I said, well, what about if you have a couple of heavyweight fights? I told you, this is what I said to Nate Diaz. And they were both mm -hmm. 100% right, which is, no, no, just in case we're not very good, we're going straight to the big one. But what you don't want to do now is take smaller money to take an easier fight and then not look great in that fight or get wobbled or get beat or get dropped. And everyone goes, oh, that was a fluke. Or that was just a weird night. You've got to capitalize now. You've got to go back to the kingdom or you've got to go to other site or whatever and just say, how much money is in a fight between Anthony Joshua and Francis and Garner? You imagine these two absolute giants standing next to each other. And you're quite right, Eric. The believers will say, Garner punches too hard for AJ. He's going to be more confident now. He's going to be better. Those two particularly will, will definitely be true, by the way. He beats Anthony Joshua and he's going to beat Anthony Joshua and he's going to rematch Tyson Fury for the undisputed heavyweight world championship. I mean, listen, I've just sold it to myself. Where do I sign? I know. But what, what a, a, a weird and wild weekend. Amazing. Unbelievable. And, the, you know, the only, the only disappointment is that this man should be walking away, in my opinion, right. with the greatest victory. I mean, it's not even close. You talk about Buster Douglas, Tyson Fury, uh, uh, Mike Tyson. You talk about Andy Rees, Anthony Joshua at the Garden. Not even close. He's never had a professional fight. It is it's the most remarkable, remarkable performance and event in inside a ring that as anyone's ever seen. And you know, I know he's got the respect of the people and everybody loves him, but imagine if he got the win. Oh my god, yeah, that, that, those scenes of him, you know, being carried out in the arms. Mm -hmm. It would be incredible. By the way, uh just very quickly, two things. Um, December twenty third, is that now your date? If it's not Fury Usyk, because I thought that they were trying well, to steal early, your shine. Kind of, yeah, we kind of we've been a bit hustled out there. I, I always felt like they wouldn't go on that day, but they waited long enough to uh, give us less than eight weeks. So we're talking to the zone today, actually. But you know, Ben Eubank, it's just it's such a huge fight, and like it's seven and a bit weeks. So I think that's going to be mid to end of January. But there is a chance AJ could fight December twenty third um, against who? So we'll see. I don't know yet. I don't know. He's going to take a tuna fight before the Francis again. fight? That's a mistake. We'll see. That's but when do you think Francis will want to fight? I mean, uh, he I'll, told me I'm speaking to the right guy because yeah. you're more or less his agent then. Uh, for, pretty, uh, and also, I just spoke to him on the air. Uh, <laughs> February, March. Okay. Well, we'll wait. Okay. We'll All right. wait. All right. But is yeah. Ben Eubank signed? Imminent. Imminent. Okay. It's just the date yeah. now. You're going to see that fight in the UK in January. Uh, there's a guy back there in New York, Rick. He says that's his most anticipated fight in any discipline. It's the biggest fight. I mean, it is one of the biggest fights in the history of British boxing. It's the biggest British fight outside of AJ Fury. And it's actually close to that. He's an absolute monster. So we hope to get it locked in this week. Okay. And then the last one, Amanda Serrano, uh, three 12 minute rounds on Friday. Yeah, good. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't watch the whole fight. I mean, she's amazing. Like, you know, she's through what, 1,200 punches. Yeah, yeah. Um, Listen, for me, I'm a, I'm a believer that women definitely have the right to to fight under the same circumstances as the men in, in many different ways, financially, commercially, duration. I like two minutes because I feel like it's been such a great format for boxing. And I think that sometimes you can slow down a little bit over three minutes. Like there's no fighter that's going to fight at exactly the same pace over three minutes as two minutes really comes down to the governing bodies because they're going to rule over it. Obviously, the WBC say, no, we're not going to allow it. The other governing bodies allowed that particular fight, but it all comes down to the rules. I mean, if if 
the governing body say we only allow 12 threes, everyone's going to do it. Okay. If they don't, they're not going to do it. But respect to Amanda Serrano because, you know, she's pushing the boundaries and and still, you know, all action entertaining. And she'll have one eye, of course, on Cameron Taylor on November 25th. Uh, you also have the interim champion in WBC, Sky Nicholson. If she wins on that card, yeah. could she'll she be fight? mandatory for Amanda Serrano. Right. Yeah, she, she'll be the mandatory for Amanda Serrano. And, you know, whatever the WBC ruling is, is what it will be. If they turn around and say, no, we're 12 threes, the fight's going to be 12 threes. If it's 10 twos, it's 10 twos. So um, I, I don't think, for, from the, the female fighters that I spoke to, they're quite relaxed about it. I think 10 twos, they like the format. It's going to suit certain fighters to have more time, you know, as, as it would. But I think the general feeling amongst the female boxing community is whatever is decided mm. will be. I think, you know, and I think respect to Amanda for pushing the boundaries. And for me, as a TV format, I think 10 twos has really helped the growth of boxing to be very entertaining in female code. I also understand that at the very elite end, Sometimes you will you may see an even better fight over twelve threes. Maybe it's ten threes as a as a compromise. Mm-hmm. I have no idea, but you know it's good good to push the barriers. Well, uh, I, I saw you in Manchester. That was a lot of fun. I said that I was hoping to see you in Dublin. I will not be in Dublin, so I'm sorry to all my Yeah, Irish why friends. is that? You messaged me that last night. Is it, I mean, I, when you texted me that last night, mm. I didn't know if that was like saying to me, "Hmm, you guys aren't bringing me to Dublin," no, or was, you were just busy. No, 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 no. Uh, well. Do we need to talk about this on the air? I mean, it's a little bit. Well, uh, I mean, I, 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 I kind of feel like public negotiations are sometimes. No, you know, I was told my uh, I was told my uh, my services weren't needed, and uh, oh, well, we'll have to look at that. I wasn't well, aware of that actually. Uh, I was told when you sent me that message budget, last night. I, I didn't. Maybe you know, not needed, budget. but uh, maybe I'm too expensive. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Well, this has been a problem with your rapid growth. Yeah. Uh, there was some concern. They said that I was a little bit more popular than you in Dublin and you were feeling like I was, out ch- you know, I, who am I to judge? But I was ready to go. Not just in Dublin, Aaron. Not I just had in it. Dublin. I had it locked off. But the good news is, is I, I feel like with your current flag waving of Francis and Garner, Maybe I'll you be might DG become friend. a little, a little bit less popular in boxing. No, you know I mean? stop it. Because I think, I, I feel like the MMA world and the boxing world is going to be like this now. Next thing you're going to tell me that this kid can beat Devin Haney. Uh, uh, you know? Devin Haney uh, put out a tweet. He says he wants me at the fight on December 9th. But uh, listen, yeah. who am I to... Well, listen, let me work on the behind the scenes. I think you're a fantastic asset to our events, Aaron. Well, I appreciate and it. I think you are an absolute world-class comment, even though you did Misfits the other week. You know? Yeah, <laughs> Uh, I appreciate that. And you did it without even being able to speak. What a pro. I know. Thank you. you, You're the only one to bring that up. Uh, I do love the sweet science. I never said this was MMA versus boxing. I did find it funny that all the boxing people are all up in arms afterwards. You know what this was. This was one guy sticking it to everyone who said that he was an idiot for daring to dream. And uh, that was the real story, in my opinion. It really wasn't MMA versus boxing. And I agree with you. Boxing just gained a new star, which is great for boxing as well. So... It's uh, happy days for everyone. Respect to Francis and Donna. Uh, thank you, Eddie. I appreciate it very much, as always. And uh, this weekend, Joe Cordina, the best promo of 2023. Can we get Alex Haynes a promotion? Can we get him an Emmy? Can we this get is, you? Keep get, you, every time I do an interview, it's so you good. mention Alex Haynes, right? He's the best. He, and now, yeah, but then what happens when we have his annual review? Uh, I mean, it's just like literally give him a promotion. That was like, the best. The West. Oh, the hey, West Anderson. Just tell me the number. <laughs> Tell me the number. The one of you with the they telescope? It. it was amazing. Oh, it was fantastic. He's very good, Alex Haynes. Best in the business. And yeah, we're off to, uh, we just flew back and got back from Mexico today. And we're off to Monaco on Wednesday for, uh, for uh, by royal appointment. Enjoy. Joe Cordina. Enjoy. Good luck. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. There he is. Uh, the great Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. Uh, yes, that is the promo of the, uh, of the year, maybe of the century. And... Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Joe Cordina, who had the uh, knockout maybe of the year last year, certainly on the short list. He's back on the zone uh, this weekend. Now, someone who was in attendance on Saturday, I was not there, but our next guest was, and boy, was he representing for all of us on that desk. It was tremendous stuff as he was working for the great TNT sports crew, which in my opinion, blew the competition out of the water. It was fantastic what they did. Uh, I, I think so highly of Laura Woods, Carl Frampton, Steve Bunce. He had uh, Lennox Lewis involved, but it was our guy, the outlaw, Dan Hardy, right there in the middle. And he was beaming afterwards. It was tremendous to see. He's kind enough to join us right now. From uh, Where are we from? Oh, I thought it was going to be the usual spot. Is this a new spot, Dan? 
This is GB Top Team. This is Brad Pickett's gym down in London. Uh, we're here. Veronica's in training camp, so we're we're here getting some weeks of sparring before we head out to the US. Uh, it's a great gym. You probably hear the banging on the other side of the wall. There's a wrestling session going on. Okay. Well, I appreciate you doing this from the training session. Does she have a fight announced? Did I miss that? Is there something out there yet? Yeah, she's fighting December second in Austin, Texas. Jamie Lynn Hoth. Okay. Yeah, should be a, should be a good scrap. Looking forward to it. Good luck to the misses. Uh, so you're 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 right back from Saudi Arabia. Could you tell us for those that weren't there? You're I know you're a longtime fight fan, not just MMA fan. You love fighting. To be there among all those people, those famous people, those famous boxers, the glitz, the gl like. What could you just put into words what it was all like for you, the experience? It was it was surreal. I mean, just you know, just flying out there, I had Teddy Atlas on on the plane with me, and flying back, I had Frank Bruno and Joe Calzaghe and Ricky Hatton, and you know, it was I mean, it was star studded. And you know, at the venue, I I I got to meet so many people. I had a, a good chat with Lennox Lewis, and you know, Miguel Cotto was there, and all the the MMA crowd showed out as well. You know, you saw Izzy and Usman, and uh, you know, JDS was there. It, it was it was just a good time, and you kind of you kind of got the feeling, especially from the amount of of uh, superstar boxers and fighters that were there. Everybody just wants to be there to witness something special. Nobody really knew what to expect, but what we got was what nobody expected. And and I mean, I, I am still beaming from it right now. I I got back yesterday. I watched the fight a couple more times. I scored it just to make sure that I wasn't daydreaming. It was it was incredible, uh, and what Francis has achieved, and I agree with you. I, I I love Eddie. I think he's a really good interview. But I agree with you. It wasn't MMA versus boxing. This this was in Garnu, Francis in Garnu, showing everybody that he can be a professional boxer as well. He he didn't look like an MMA fighter in there. He looked like a boxer, and that was the surprise. Um, I want to ask you about your your scorecard in a second, live, and then after the fact. But I'm just curious when you're in there. You know, you're one of our own, right? As they say in, uh, in in soccer and football, he's one of our own. So when I see you there among these great boxing pundits and legends, or like, yeah, Dan, like represent, do you view it that way as well? And do you feel like they look down on you? Like, oh, well, you guys don't really know about fighting. You don't really know about boxing. What do you really have to say about all this? Does that, like, do you, do you, do you puff your chest out a little bit when you're on those desks? I, I mean, I do it only because it's an honor to be there and to be a part of it. I don't mind being the token MMA a guy you know especially because i'm working with you know you mentioned steve bunce and laura woods and 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 carl frampton just brilliant minds and, and great presenters but i get on with them really well and we have good conversations and i know that i say things sometimes that make them think and i know they say things sometimes that make me think as well so yes i am the mma guy in the boxing world and i was i was the only one pretty much i mean you know brett was out there as well but I was the only one on the desk kind of kind of talking about what Francis could do from that perspective. And there were a lot of people commenting on it, you know, great fighters that had never, never even seen Francis fight. So I, I kind of felt like he needed a good representation. And I, I was glad that they, they they offered me the opportunity to do it. But honestly, the the boxing world is not is not being fooled anymore. They they understand that in boxing they they have the upper hand almost all the time but in a, in a fight it's a different thing i mean you, you know you you just give francis ngannou calf kicks in that fight and he stops tyson fury it's it's a different thing entirely and the boxing world know it they love their sport and they protect it and appreciate it far more than they do i think the broader mma skill set but they also recognize that their their sport is only a fraction of fighting now okay uh, how did you score it live and then how did you score it at home Okay, so, um, and obviously I, I was trying to be aware that that was a little excitable. I had, I had Frampton and Buncey on either side of me and they were like scoring at the same time but pulling their hair out. I mean, Buncey's not got much to pull yeah. out. But, you know, they, like I, I was trying not to be too kind of, oh my goodness, let's focus on Francis and how well he's doing. Um, but honestly, so I gave I gave Francis, and the first round for me was the most difficult to score. I felt like Francis landed the better power punches in the first round, even though uh, Fury landed five more jabs. I mean, there wasn't much in it. But on the night, I gave Francis the first, second, course the third as a 10-8 and the fourth. Then I gave Fury the fifth and sixth. Then Francis came back seven and eight, and then Fury took nine and ten. Um, so my scorecard was 96-93 for Ngannou. I, I watched it yesterday uh, four times, and, and my scorecard stays the same. I would maybe fluctuate and, and go back on the first round and give that first round to Fury, but that's still 95-94 for, for Francis. Um, I, I thought he did enough to win it. I, I can't, I mean, you know, you look at the punch strike, so the, the punch count on CompuBox was 
what was it 71 to 59 in favor of Fury for total strikes, but 37 to 32 power strikes. And then you go knockdown, they're both in favor of, of Nganu. So for me, he did enough to win the fight. And, and if nothing else, I mean, from the, from the fifth round onwards, even when he started to get tired, I'd kind of made peace with, well, this is where Tyson takes over. But I mean, his staying power, his, his maturity and his discipline were, were incredible. And, uh, you know, hats off to him. And he, he just completely shocked Fury with his composure. What impressed you most about what Francis did? Honestly, his game plan. You know, his game plan. Like the, 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 the general conversation all week was, well, he's got to start fast. You know, he's got probably three rounds before he gets gassed. Like him gassing was a foregone conclusion. And to be honest, I felt the same as well because I felt like he was going to be swinging for the fences and trying to knock him out and miss him. Like I thought he was going to be the more aggressive fighter in there, closing the range. And I think that's what Fury had prepared for as well. You know, you watch the open workout and it was rear uppercut, Larry Holmes, rear hook. You know, it was quite clear that he was expecting Nganu to be on top of him. Like even the ropes in the ring were quite slack. It almost seemed like he'd anticipated a bit of rope-a-dope, a bit of kind of wear him out and let him work and then take over in the second half of the round. But because Francis stood at range and he kept switching his stance and he wasn't biting on feints, he wasn't wasting unnecessary energy. So it was actually Fury that kept clinching. And then he's feeling the strength of Ngannou in the clinch, who has got great head position. He was framing, he was hitting. And just it was just not the version of Francis Ngannou that anybody expected to see. And because Fury had prepared for one particular you know, archetype of fighter and he got the opposite, it took him a good while to, to you know, kind of recalibrate. And that's where he, he started to take over in the later rounds, but he still wasn't stepping out of himself and taking unnecessary risks because he must have had the Usyk fight in the back of his mind. I mean, you, you, you never do that really, is, is except a, a fight after a fight. And I, and I felt like when he hit the canvas, there was that little look over his corner and there was a bit of an unraveling. And, and you know, just from my perspective, if I was in there as him, representing boxing and you've got Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield and Manny Pacquiao and all, Mike Tyson all sitting watching a little bit of embarrassment might set in and that further you know compiles the stress of the situation in, in your heart of hearts what did you think was going to happen how did you think this would actually play out before going into it yeah well my, my prediction I made on the pre-fight show I, I expected it to be about four rounds of, of, of Fury kind of playing a little bit and trying to wear uh, Nganu down keep him on the end of his jab as much as he can and then force him to close distance onto uppercuts. But I expected Fury to kind of work for four rounds and and, and exhaust uh, Ngannou a little bit so he was a little less dangerous. And then fifth, sixth, seventh onwards, I thought he was going to start to like take him apart, uppercuts and body shots. And and I was expecting Ngannou to look far more laboured than he did. Um, that, that was my prediction. I, I was expecting a, a, a Tyson Fury stoppage. Um probably fifth, fifth, sixth, seventh round. Um, and honestly, you know, it was on borrowed time after that point. After the fifth round, I'd made peace with, if Tyson takes over now, Ngannou's done more than what more than what he needed to to get the respect he deserves. Of course, we know you work for uh, the PFL. You're very uh, instrumental in PFL Europe. And we're going to be talking to Don Davis in, in a few minutes as well. And so I can't wait to hear his thoughts on it all. And so I say that before asking you, if it was up to you, what would you like to see Francis do now? I would like to see him back in MMA. I would like to see him, you know, hopefully headline one of the, you know, the P P PFL pay-per-view event that's coming up in, in the new year, maybe the first half of next year, get him an MMA fight and then see where he is in the rankings and see kind of where the heavyweight division is at. And, and if anybody makes sense, there's some really good fights I feel for, for Ngannou and, something else that's worth mentioning is of all the heavyweights on the planet, you, you'll agree with this, Ariel, like Tyson Fury stylistically is probably the most difficult for Ngannou to deal with. Mm -hmm. He's tall, he's got great upper body movement, great defense. So then you look at someone like an Anthony Joshua or a Joe Joyce, uh, you know, they, they're a little bit more upright. They don't necessarily take a punch quite as well. They certainly don't regroup as well as Tyson Fury does. So I feel like he's already taken, take, taken on probably the stiffest test and proved himself. So the door is definitely wide open for him in boxing. And then, you know, say you're putting someone like a Deontay Wilder in there, you've got two of the most thunderous punches on the planet. But again, stylistically better for Ngannou because there are holes in Deontay Wilder's game that can be exploited when he's punching. So 
I, I think honestly, the all doors are open for him. We we could be looking at someone that can hold the WBC and the PFL title at the same time. Uh, Francis told us earlier today that Deontay has been training in MMA for the last two months and that this is possible. Deont I think Deontay is the only one crazy enough to go over to MMA and fight him over there. And I think that that, if he does have to go back to PFL per the deal, is the biggest fight possible. With all due respect to any MMA heavyweight out there, there is nothing, because it continues this story of Francis versus the boxers, but now one goes over to our side of the fence. Uh, how do you feel about that idea? I mean, wow, what, what what a fight that would be. I agree. I mean, you know, him or or even Tyson Fury crossing over, even if they did some kind of hybrid rule set, I think it would be humongous. I actually spoke, you know, I actually asked, asked a few of the boxers at the weekend, do you think this would be a bigger event if this was Tyson Fury versus Ngannou in MMA? And they all, all agreed it would be a bigger event than, than the boxing match. So I, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an understanding on the boxing side that there is intrigue there and it might happen. And I, I will say this. I, I don't want to take. A, I'll take a little bit of credit. When we had uh, Deontay Wilder on on the the show the other week in Atlanta, I made sure there was a pair of two XL PFL gloves on the table. So when he was on set with the with the Sean and and Randy, I handed him those gloves. So because the thing is, right, you're a power puncher. You go from ten ounce gloves. You put a four ounce glove on, and you're like. Wow. I mean, I could do some real damage with this. So I, I like to think I'm maybe wet his appetite okay. a little bit for the four ounce gloves. Take the credit. I love it. Take the credit. Um, but And I have those gloves in my house as well, in my collection. Wow. <laughs> 2XL, you said? Yeah, 2XL. He's got massive hands. That's He's Brock a huge Lesner, individual. Yeah, Brock Lesnar-esque. Um, uh, Eddie said he thinks, and of course, you know, that's his guy, Anthony Joshua smokes Francis Ngannou in a boxing match. Three rounds to six. He, he was like trying to be nicer. Okay, fine, six. I think he's crazy. I said, when's the last time Anthony Joshua smoked anyone? Yeah, sure, he could beat a Jermaine Franklin, you know, 12 rounds of just, you know, jabbing him. But like, who's he smoking? Uh, Robert Hellenius on uh, five days notice. W what's your response to that? Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think, on honestly, Anthony Joshua is probably one of the better matchups for Ngannou out of all the heavyweights. No, I, I like the Joe Joyce idea because he... he he boxes with a very kind of, and I don't mean amateurish, I mean an amateur, like technical amateur style where he mm -hmm. places his shots, but his head's very much on the center line. He doesn't move it a lot. But like the thing is, Anthony Joshua, I just don't know as he can regroup if he hits the canvas, especially against an Owen one boxer that's, that's, you know, still early in his career. I feel like it would unravel much quicker. And I feel like Tyson Fury did a good job of pulling it back together, even though he wasn't prepared for that version of Ngannou. But for, for me, Anthony Joshua is, is a much, much better matchup for Ngannou. I, I could see Ngannou putting him away. Do you think we'll now see, uh, as, as I just said, I think that if Ngannou would have gone smoked, that would have been it for the MMA versus boxing fights for a while until the next superstar came along. Now I feel like the door is wide open again. And you see everyone from Mike Perry calling out Canelo to Sugar Sean and Devin Haney doing their thing. And God knows who else is going to come. Maybe Connor all of a sudden wants to do it again. Do you think this now has reignited that and we're going to see more of these come next year? I think so. And I, and I hope so. You know, something that kind of flew under the radar a bit is so we had six heavyweight fights on the undercard. But the first fight of the night was Jack McGann, um, who was uh, the son of, of uh, Anthony McGann from right. Walsley. And he was fighting um, uh, Roberto Duran Jr., Roberto Duran's son. And he he put him away with the most beautiful left hook. And that's a guy that's 11-5 and five in MMA that crossed over into box and is now undefeated and is a champion. Like, some, somebody's already doing it. We've already got somebody from the MMA world that is competing with boxers and uh, and doing very well. But I definitely feel like, like Francis's performance has opened up the door. I could see Izzy in there if he was allowed... Connor was talking about boxing Pacquiao. Of course, he's you know he's got to get permission for those kind of things, and that's where I feel like it falls back on the PFL side, because you know we've like Sadabu C. I feel like could cross over quite comfortably and box as well. Uh, we've got a few people. Dennis Goltsov as a heavyweight, one of the best jabs in mixed martial arts. We've we've got guys that could cross over, and I think contend and do very well. I love the if he's allowed because that was going to be my next question. Do you think that there are going to be fighters who are in the UFC now saying? Man, I want some of that. I want I want that freedom. I want to dress the way I want to dress. I want to I want the show. I want to shock the I want all of that. And you think this might be a tipping point or is Francis just a really like the amount of things that had to break in his favor Dan, you know, like from from the win over Surreal and then waiting out the contract and 
all this stuff, you know, all the things that had to, it's just, it's actually incredible that he even got to Saturday night and got this fight. So do you think he's just a one-off or do you think that this will now be a tipping point for other fighters in the UFC to say like, I, I, I need some of this as well? I mean, I, I hope so. You, know, you, you remember back in the day when uh, Anderson Silva wanted to box Roy yeah. Jones and he wasn't allowed, and he and he was disappointed. And you could tell in his, in his next couple of performances, they were very lackluster. Like Sean O'Malley wants to step into boxing. There, there are other fighters. I mean, like Sean Strickland. You know, he's he, he's made a fan out of me in, in in his performance against Israel Adesanya. I know that in the boxing world, he, he's a very unorthodox and very difficult to deal with. But I, I would absolutely put him in there against some of those guys and, and, and watch him mix it up. Like th there's definitely scope for other fighters to cross over, but you've got to, and I keep going back. Of course we got the May Mac thing and that was a, that was a one-off. And I do feel like the UFC in particular, like Dana, Dana is, a, is a, a boxing fan. I think he was intrigued by that because he felt like Connor was something quite special and he might be able to just do something as well as obviously, you know, they made a bunch of cash out of it. But then, you know, if you look at someone like Sean O'Malley or John Jones, he doesn't want to take that risk, you know. You remember when he took Chuck Liddell over to Pride and, and and Rampage beat him up. It's that kind of burned him, I feel. And he, and he's been very very reluctant to to risk breaking his toys in other people's promotions. Um, I, I think he's going to do everything he can to stop people doing it. But I also think now people are going to have the courage and confidence to, you know, see Ngannou go into free agency, recognize that maybe the grass is potentially greener elsewhere. The money's certainly greener elsewhere. I can tell you that. And, you know, we'll see a few more people working the way out of their contract. Uh, just one thing to add to that as well. $2 million on the table for Francis Ngannou's first opponent in the PFL. There are enough heavyweight fighters that are prize fighters because they're big guys that can punch hard that will go where the money is. And I think we're going to see a couple of people come out of their contracts soon and cross over ready for that big payday. Is it um, a naive thing to say, oh, on this Monday, the UFC regrets... They could have been the co-promoter of this event. It could have been the UFC versus Queensberry, the UFC versus top ranking Queensbury. They could have they could have said, Francis, we're gonna do this with you like we do. But they're a behemoth. Like Dana White's not, you know, losing sleep. Or do you think there are people in Las Vegas right now saying, like, yeah, we we fumbled the bag, we screwed up, we should have been a part of this, and we just let the baddest man on the planet walk away and nothing to show for it? I don't think so, no. I don't think so, and, and you know, you know the the game of politics. You know, as soon as Ngannou left, and you, I've saw I've seen the clip posted on on your Instagram, just beautiful timing. Thank you very much. I thoroughly enjoyed watching that clip over and over and over again. You know, fumbled the bag, wants to fight lesser opponents, wants to etc. 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 Like all of that fell apart at the weekend. Like the, the, there was a, a moment where someone might have believed it because they believe everything that he says. But we know that's not true. We know that's not factual. And now we've got evidence that it's not factual. You, you can't say that Francis doesn't want to take risks. I mean, he crossed an ocean on a dinghy. Come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's <laughs> like, absurd. come on. It's absurd. It's one thing to say that about some guy from uh, Georgia, you know, some kid that grew up like, like this guy has, has, stared death in the face, was homeless, and, and he did that. It's it's really one of the most remarkable things that I've ever seen. Uh, truly a pleasure to watch. Uh, you are back in action, not you, but your, you know, your, your entity, PFL Europe. One more event, uh, that's in December in Dublin. And I'm just curious, you're, you're approaching a year with PFL, right? Like this will be the close of the calendar. H how has it been? I saw you, you tease on Twitter that you've got some big plans, some big ideas for next year. So how are you feeling about it all, this this new chapter in your life? It's It's been amazing. It, it's been amazing. I feel like I'm in a place where I can have real positive influence. I can create opportunities for fighters. People will listen to me when I speak up, when I say that this is this could be improved. This is maybe not working right. You know, Peter Murray, Don Davis, they're, they're fantastic. They, they're trying to grow something quite special here, something that's broad across the world and sustainable and is going to create opportunities for fighters and I, and I feel like I can have a positive influence I mean you, you look at the Dublin the Dublin card I've got Brett Johns on there I've got Tom Breeze on there you know like they're people that I I loved watching when, when they were in the UFC and following their career but they kind of you know they, they they stepped away from that big stage and, and we need them back on it um I think they're both going to be superstars in the next couple of years and I am growing some superstars as well watch out for Chanel Dyer she's going to be in the the flyweight division next year um, lots and lots of very, very talented fighters coming through. And we've got the Black Friday show, of course, the, the championship. And then you know, we've got the, the Dublin event, December uh, December 8th. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I've never been in a place where I feel as as, uh, 
as good and as welcome and as positive about what things are uh, the things that are happening with combat sports um the, the the industry feels like it's changing for the better and for the benefit of the fighters that's lovely to hear and we also found out last week uh, nate the great kelly who we were first introduced to uh, when when Connor burst on the scene at, at his uh, Dublin presser with Jose Aldo, and he said, Dana, I'm going to be the next... I think he was, I don't know, 12 at the time, 11. Uh, he's going to be fighting as an amateur on that card as well. So that is uh, an amazing full circle moment. Well done, my friend. You smashed it out there. It was great to see you up there. I hope you get many more opportunities like that. And of course, good luck in December in Dublin and, and next year. Always appreciate you coming on. And good luck to Veronica you, too. Friend. It's been a tough go for Nottingham Forest. So we need some W's, all right? Hey, we'll be in we'll be in New York in a couple of weeks. We should come and see you and have a chat. Anytime. You are what please. You are always welcome. Thank you so much. I'd love that. Awesome. Thank you. See you soon, my friend. Great talking to you. All right, there he is, the great uh, Dan Hardy, the outlaw who did a fantastic job on the TNT Sports desk on uh on Saturday from uh, Saudi Arabia. That was uh that was super super fun and great to get his perspective as well. One of the themes throughout uh, the week. And then of course on Saturday and on Monday, I uh, keep getting messages. Okay. So what does this all mean for Francis and the PFL? We got the announcement on May 16th, I believe it was Francis to the PFL, uh, but he could box. And then we found out in July, July 11th to be exact, that he's going to fight Tyson Fury. Okay. But what about the PFL? You have the likes of Eddie Hearn who's saying, don't go back to MMA. Uh, you got to fight in boxing. You have other people who are like, no, come here, boxing, boxing, boxing. But he does have a deal with PFL and to Francis's credit, Earlier in the show, he said, you know, he still wants to, to to honor that contract. He still wants to compete in MMA. Well, I could sit here and ask other people about it. I could wax poetic about it. I could uh, hypothesize. I can throw out all kinds of crazy ideas. Or we could talk to one of the founders and the chairman of the Professional Fighters League, uh, a man who is uh, very busy these days, a man who was instrumental in signing Francis, uh, when he did back in May. For the first time on this program, we have Don Davis. And it's a great honor to have him on. Don, how are you? Ariel, this is the day. Six years ago, I started the PFL. I knew this day would come. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, it's great to have you. I appreciate that. I, I appreciate you Absolutely. coming on. And uh, congratulations on what I thought was a great night for your organization when one of your own, Francis Ngannou, did what he did on Saturday. Is that fair to say? Was Saturday a great night for the PFL? Saturday was a great night for fight fans, for MMA, for Francis, and for PFL. Everyone won Saturday night, except for boxing <laughs> and except for Tyson Fury. Everyone else on planet Earth won Saturday night. Uh, you, I, I, I don't believe were there. I think Peter Murray was there, but just as, as someone who's now very much in the, uh, the TV business, uh, the combat sports TV business, can I just get your, your take on what you witnessed, like the show that you saw down there in Saudi Arabia? Yes. My partner running PFL, Peter Murray, our CEO was there. I watched six hours live while I was working, uh, on some actual business here in the United States. It was the greatest show on combat sports earth ever i believe we have to give full credit to the saudi arabian hosts for what i saw the most energetic unique and entertaining pregame show and the biggest spectacle that people doubted put on in terms of that main event so in terms of entertainment a plus in terms of fighting chops on the main event a plus if you missed it you missed it. And if you saw it, you loved it. Do you think that, you know, um, I see some people at three to five years, five to 10 years, there's no more Las Vegas. All the big fights are going to be there in Saudi Arabia. Do you believe that to be true as well? I've been building disruptive companies, innovative companies for 35 years. As soon as somebody wins, there's new challengers. Nothing is ever hardened, you know, in terms of the world. There was never going to be another search engine. There was Yahoo, and now there's Google. Mm -hmm. Blockbuster was the best thing in the world for all of us, and then there's Netflix. So is Saudi Arabia the center of the boxing and MMA universe? Yes. Is it going to grow in power? Yes. But I think other places in the world are going to wake up and say, great for tourism, great for entertainment, great for branding. And I think other centers will rise around the world and start to say, I want to get this game also. Okay. Um just curious, when you were meeting with Francis, because you guys signed him first, and he told you these plans, 
deep down, like, were you thinking, okay, you know, we're, we're paying you a lot of money. I don't want you to go in there and get embarrassed. Uh, maybe you fight a lower level guy, maybe not Tyson Fury. Can we fight, you know, someone who's in the top 30, someone like that. Did you, did you, did you think this was a good idea? Or can you say, you know, in the aftermath that uh, yeah. you were a little bit worried about your investment? RL, you know me. Um, and I tweeted about this the last six months. Anybody who really knows Francis Naganu knows what kind of man he is. And he's a different kind of man. You don't survive 14 months in a raft, in detention centers, and in the desert just to start your life and ever be doubted. His inner vision of what he wants to try to push himself to achieve is remarkable, strong, and true. So did I think he could win? I thought he had a good chance, but who knows? But did I ever doubt his vision and how big it was? Never. And I think what sit, makes us different at the PFL than every other sports organization, and I've watched people on your show today, I've watched people over the last 48 hours. Everyone's got a plan for Francis Nagano. Everyone's a bandwagoner. From the very beginning, why Francis and the PFL got our deal done in two days is we wanted the best thing for Francis Nagano. In business, when you do the best thing by your partners, it tends to be the best thing for your business. That Jerry Maguire, help me help you, <laughs> it tends to work out. One out of 10 times, the partner is a bad partner, and it's bad for you. In my 35 years, nine out of 10 times, if you're a good partner, the partner's a good partner to you. And I think Francis sensed we wanted the best for him. We would support that, and we think the best will work out for the PFL because of that. Okay, so with that being said, will Francis's next fight be in the PFL? Not next MMA fight. No idea. No idea. No idea. Why is that? No idea. Uh I, Francis is making plans. I heard him on your show saying he's going to make decisions in the next two weeks. Um, we know what he's working on. And I think there is a path that could go one of two ways. I think there's a boxing path for him next. And I think there's a mixed fight for him next. It will look a little different. It will go against somebody. It might be under mixed rules. But I think the opponents in pure MMA are not that interesting right now. Or others, if we're just like the fans, we're just like the fighters. We're not like the other companies. Oh, let's just do it because they're our guys. Okay? There's only one guy in MMA right now who's interesting for Francis Nagato, John Jones. One guy. Everybody says, well, what about Stipe? Maybe. Give him a half a point. 1.5 guys <laughs> who are compelling. I don't want to say who could put on a good fight for him. There's three or four other guys who could put on a competitive fight for Francis. So I'm not talking about competitive fight. I'm saying compelling 1.5 guys in MMA in the world. And one's hurt for the next nine months. And the other one is under contract. So we're realists. So what is the best fight for our fighter, Francis Nagano, his career, and fighting fans? That's the fight we should make. And that's the fight we're going to be partners to make. So will he fight in MMA in 2024? Yes, he will. Will that be his next fight? I don't know. Okay, before Saturday, was the plan for his next fight to be in the PFL? And, and, and if so, have plans changed? Is that what you're saying? Um, we had not yet set his next fight. We had the same kind of plans. It could be one of his two paths. So one of his two paths is still the same path. But I think boxing became a more serious path for him because of his overwhelming success. So I think now he's got two great options. We support either one of the two. We had always slated for him to have one MMA fight in 2024. And we had contingencies. March, December. March, December. So will he fight next year? Yes. Which fight will it be? I don't know. And we'll partner with Francis and let that be his call. Uh, if his next fight is in boxing... Can PFL be involved or will it be the same thing as we saw on Saturday where you're just supporting it, but you're not actually financially involved? Yeah, we've always said that that's his business, our expertise, MMA, our global vision, MMA. So anything he needs from us will be there, but that's his business. If it's a mixed rules fight, as you alluded to, is PFL involved? Yes. Okay. Uh, he said, you said you saw the interview, Deontay Wilder has been training in MMA. Is that the mixed rules fight that you are alluding to? 
That's one of the two possibilities. And obviously that'd be fantastic. That was, I love that one. It's incredible. Yeah. That is must see TV. Uh, what is the other possibility? Oh, <laughs> well, I mean, I had to ask. You know, man, I'll tell you anything that's my business to tell you, but I respect other people's business. Okay. So Andrew Markel, his team, we want to respect their business and let them do their business. Okay. But if it is a mixed rules fight, you are involved. Yes. Is that what you're hoping for? I think it'd be fantastic because I think he already proved against Tyson Fury what he has to prove for now. I think he'll get back to that. As Francis tweeted that night, I'll get back to that at some point. So I think he'll get back to that. But what would I think would be fascinating? Deontay Wilder in a, in a, in a, in a mixed rules fight. Like I always say, what do I want to see? I know a lot about boxing, a lot about MMA, but I'm not a savant. I'm not a deep, deep, deep insider, even though I run the company. So I like to test, what do I think millions of people would love to see? I think that's the most interesting thing we could all see. And is Deontay interested in this? Once again, not to speak his business, but my understanding is yes. Wow. This will all come down to availability, money, details. Availability, money, and details. But I think those can come together. And when you say mixed rules, what, what does that mean? TBD. Okay. So it, it wouldn't necessarily be like full MMA, but it might be like with the MMA gloves and just kicks, no takedowns, something like that. Correct. Wow. Uh, that would be big time stuff. Where would a fight like that take place if it's uh, with the PFL? Planet Earth. Okay. <laughs> would that be back in Saudi? Look, I think there's a couple. I think there's a couple big options. Saudi, big option. Africa, big option. France, big option. All three of those have um, history for Francis. They'll have meaning for fans. They'll have tremendous storylines. So I think obviously all three of those are big, big, big ideas. And then you've obviously got the Sphere and AT&T Stadium, which still are yet to host anything of a spectacle for combat. So I think you've got a lot, a lot of good options. That's not the, the driver. That's the tail on the dog. The dog is how do you get these two fighters to come together to present it to the world? And then you'll be able to put together something that's entertaining, that is cited right, that is positioned economically correct. Have you guys had any talks with the Sphere? Uh, Pete and I both toured the sphere three months ago, long before Dana talks about it. The greatest thing I've ever seen. Wow. The greatest thing I've ever seen. If I were an entertainer or if I were a sports figure, I would take actually less economics to be able to put on one event there. What it does for fa it's 1,100 IMAX screens. Wow. <laughs> Put your head around that. We've all been to an IMAX screen. So to me, to be able to program that, if we could ever put together... Uh, Jake versus Nate, if Nate would stop weaseling out and, and complaining uh, about those, that, that MMA fight with Jake, something like that that put the mind of Jake Paul creatively against the technology available. Wow. Wow. So it's not just the spectacle of the circle. That's 10% of it. The creative technology of the graphics and the engagement and the immersion is 90% that would be blow away. So you need to put creative minds against it, not just a great event. I have to ask you about that. What do you mean weaseling out? Nate Diaz and weaseling, those two words don't go together. Well, it's it, look, I, I respect Nate because he's he's the people's champ. He's a man's man. His stand-up is all stand-up. But he said, I'll do it in the PFL smart cage, two minutes to you after the fight. He's got a standing offer of between 10 and 15 million, and he's hiding behind a rock. Okay. Do you think that happens? 10 to 15 million, biggest payday of his life. He gets beat by Jake and he's hiding behind a rock. Could, could I ask, these are big numbers, right? Uh, how, do, how does the, without being, you know, uh, disrespectful, if you take, how does the PFL afford that? 10 to 50 million is not something that is, is seen in MMA. How does that make financial sense Huge for you? Huge numbers. Essentially what we are willing to do for the biggest fights in the world, not all fights, the biggest fights in the world, is we're willing to break even and move the money to the fighters. We're on record for pay-per-view super fights at the highest level. Francis, Jake or Nate, will break even and not make one penny for a few of those fights. So all the money that's being made by other companies off the backs of fighters, 
we've stopped that and we said, hey, PFL, you know what we're going to do? We're going to move some pay-per-view money to you guys on a true 50-50 revenue split. True 50-50. And when you do that and you put on big, big, big production that's very sexy and entertaining for fans, there's no money left. That's a basically a break-even model. And when you look at UFC's financials, that's how it pens out. They make about 50% bottom line from that by paying fighters about 20%. We're willing to do that. We're a new company. We're a disruptive company. We're raising our brand. So we're already call it 40 to 45% of UFC's audience on TV. But in pay-per-view, we're new. We're the new kid on the block. So we're willing to say, one, we want our fights to be great. So fans watch them again. Two, we want to recruit the best fighters. So we want to give them an awesome deal. And three, we want those events to be better than theirs. So to do that, we're willing to do that and make no money on that. That's essentially how we're able to come up with those dollars, which are, as you would say, mind numbing in this industry. So when people don't take those numbers, I would say you either don't care about money or you're scared about the fight or there's some other agenda. Do you think the UFC regrets not doing this fight with Francis? I would answer that two ways. As my 93-year-old dad says, and I talk to him every day about business, every job is easy until it's yours. So I respect the UFC that they have built this sport from scratch. And I've always said PFL's here to be a co-leader. We don't have to take share. We don't have to beat them. We're going to be a co-leader. We do something very different, point one. Point two is Francis Ngannou, is the biggest star in the world today. I heard a bunch of people say they don't regret it. How not? What, what sport from soccer to NBA to pickleball to MMA do you not want to have the biggest star on the planet working for you? I don't know. I'll tell you, we're pretty happy. Uh, this was great for you guys. I mean, e even people just talking about the PFL like it's, uh, you know, a part of the lexicon, you know, like no one has to yes. explain. You can't pay for that kind of marketing on the broadcast. You can't pay for it. You know, you hear Joe Tessitore on ESPN afterwards talking about PFL like it's a thing. I don't know if he knows what the PFL is a year ago, right? Just, you know, with all due. No. That's huge yeah. for you guys, right? So that that to me is why I think it was such a great night for you. Even if his next fight isn't in the PFL cage, uh, he's associated and affiliated with you guys, and he's flying your flag. It's it's It could have worked out better. Carl, you're, yeah, you're right. Look, for people who don't know the PFL, and I go into Chick-fil-A or I go into Verizon store, and people go, oh, you know, I, I watched that fight. And I say, oh, the PFL. And they go, oh, I'm not so sure. And I go, you know, Friday night, ESPN. And they go, I love that. But they don't always know the name PFL. So why we're 40 to 45% of UFC's viewing audience, true stat, Friday night to them on Saturday night, because we're new, because we don't have marketing dollars, people don't know our name. So I like to say our product is in college. Our brand is in fifth grade. Mm. <laughs> so we need to raise the brand profile. No different from building new companies. So do we have great fighters? Do we have awesome fights? Is the smart cage super cool? Is the video production probably equal or better than theirs? Yes, but nobody has heard of that. So we need to tell people, Check it out. Because once they check it out, they don't leave. But we got to raise the brand profile. And Francis and what's happening is doing that. Uh, I've been talking a lot about this being a huge year for the PFL and next year being even bigger uh, because your, your, your TV rights deal is up. Is there anything you could tell us about where we can watch the PFL next year? Um, I'll tell you a couple of things. We've been on ESPN four years. Primetime Friday nights. Different night than UFC. We've loved it. They've been great partners. We, we feel we've over-delivered from them. We're working with them to see about possible extensions for another two years. We've kept our deals very short two years because we've doubled our audience every two years. So we don't want a long-term deal. We want to stay short. We're hopeful that we can come to agreement on another two-year deal to start in 2024, to stay on ESPN primetime and simulcast on ESPN Plus in the United States. What a lot of people don't know, because they're very U.S.-centric, is we have 22 media partners that were broadcast in 150 countries globally. So we're broadcast or streamed with kind of a top three, oftentimes top two company, in every other 150 country. Those are all up half next year, half the following year. And, um, and so we'll continue to negotiate those. But obviously in the U.S., ESPN is the best platform. There are other very, very good platforms. We're in discussions with them. 
hopefully by Thanksgiving, we'll have an announcement. Okay. Regardless of what happens, can we rectify not being able to watch PFL Europe in, in the United States? I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. Why well, Cedric Dombe, uh, yes. I couldn't, I was following it on Twitter myself because I wasn't able to be there in, in Paris. Yes. For those who don't know much, the international leagues of PFL Europe, next March, we're going to launch PFL Mideast. We will announce shortly PFL Australia and PFL Africa for 2025. Wow. So we're going to have four of these international leagues up and running in the next three years. Super connected. So we're going to connect the world. If you're a fan or a fighter, Champions League of MMA. Very cool. Um, we will have a deal by the end of the year that you'll be able to see all of the regional international leagues here in the United States. You'll also be able to see them around the world with different broadcast partners. Why that's interesting is Rising Stars, Dakota, Cedric Dumbe, they are going to start fighting in their indigenous countries. So they'll become a champion of PFL Europe. Once they are, they'll go to PFL Global, the top league the next year. So we'll start to discover that talent, why they tend to sign with us instead of UFC, more money, more exposure, more guaranteed control. Brothers, you're not in the pile. It's like if, Ariel, you and I got hired at a company, we're like, we're one of a thousand employees. Will we ever get out of the pile? Here, if you're a fighter in PFL Europe, you win three times, you're the champion. You become the champion, you're mocked immediately in PFL League next year. You get a guaranteed slot. So you win 100000 which is three times the top paying promotion in Europe, plus you're in PFL Global immediately. And in all cases, global distribution, global exposure from the very beginning of your career. So we've been winning out Dakota and Cedric Dumbe, heavily competitive, as you know. You tweeted about both of them. UFC wanted both fighters. We won both fighters. Not just money, but exposure and control. Okay. That is great to hear. And of course, uh, you had to know this was coming. I'd be remiss if I don't ask you about Bellator. It's the worst kept secret. Is PFL close to buying Bellator? I couldn't comment yes or no on anything undergoing. What I would say is PFL has the brand platform expertise and infrastructure that we wouldn't buy anybody for any of that. We respect fighters. We don't badmouth fighters when they're other places. We would love to have more top talent. So if we'd ever make an acquisition, it would be to bring other great fighters together and give fans more great fights. And there's no secret that there's only one place there's good fighters other than PFL and UFC, really, when you look at Fight Matrix, and that's Bellator. So a lot of those fighters are great, and we'd like a lot of those fighters to, to, to be under our banner. When do you think we'll know yes or no on this topic? Well, just reading what I'm reading in the marketplace from Bellator itself, they've shut down that division both boxing and MMA by the end of this year. So I would expect to hear something by the end of this year for sure. Okay. Uh, perhaps if something big happens, you can come back on this program, maybe even in studio. Not only, not on Zoom, in studio. Ah, uh, let's do it, Don. This in has been, studio. This has been fantastic. In studio. This has been lovely. All right. um, love everything that you guys are doing and it's, it's, uh, it's really cool to see how much the promotion has grown. So congratulations. One last thing before I let you go. Your prediction, Francis Ngannou, What's he doing next? I think Francis does Deontay Wilder. Oh, my gosh. And I think it it is a wild fight because what you know, Ariel, and what I know is who Francis is. But now the rest of the world knows who he is. And he is a global superstar. And everyone is going to see that not miss it. And no one's going to sleep on him this time. No, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I think he would be the favorite this time. Uh, it's You know, we need more characters like you, Don, in MMA. We need more people like you who pull no punches. I love the tweets. I love everything about it. I love the bravado. And you put your money where your, where your mouth is, really. You're signing these deals. You're making it happen. So I wish you nothing but the best. Uh, Black Friday coming up, championship once again on ESPN yes. and ESPN yes. pay-per-view. So good luck with that. Uh, some big fights. And then, of course, the final PFL event of the year. That's uh, December 8th in Dublin the PFL Europe finals. So some, uh, some big events coming up for you guys. I wish you guys nothing but the best. Thanks for coming on and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Ariel. Take care. There he is, the uh, co-founder and chairman of uh, PFL, Don Davis, uh, a new character in the, in the mix here in the world of MMA. And uh, I enjoyed that immensely. What a fun day. Isn't it amazing, guys, that other than, I think other than my one... Uh, other than my Eubank Ben question and my Serrano question to Eddie Hearn, I don't think we've talked about anything 
other than Francis, Tyson, and the orbit that is Francis and Ganu right now. Is that correct? Did I mention anything else? Have I said anything else? That's pretty much it, man. You Unbe- it all. Unbelievable. What a day. Yeah, what a day. Went by fast. Three hours, quick. Man, even His Excellency just popped. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Shout out to His Excellency. I, I forgot. <laughs> did anyone catch what I said that Frank was? Did you guys like that? I was hoping someone. What, he's a big fan? Yeah. <laughs> I saw someone in the chat said that uh, His Excellency was calling in to book a uh, bare knuckle bare knuckle boxing match between John Fury and Mysterious Frank. That was his big announcement. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Um, wow. All right. I need to catch my breath here, guys. Uh, shout out to everyone who's tuning in. Great audience today. We do this every Monday and Wednesday at 1 o'clock to about 5 o'clock. And uh, we'll have another great show. Uh, for you on Wednesday, some other members of Team Francis will be. On. I mean, it's it's really it's really dominating the headlines this week. And uh, I mean, could you blame us? You know, I they, mean, what else would you talk about, man? The voting for the King of the Violence belt. Uh, oh, you know what? I mean, that's about it. That's about all I can think of. That is a great thing. I I, I will say uh, they got lucky on this one. No UFC event, nothing in MMA. So every like, there's really nothing else to talk about this weekend. Um, so they really got lucky with the timing, but yes, you did mention that. I mean, would you say that at this point we're like at the epicenter of the combat sports world It's like, it just feels like everything just comes through these doors, right? Like you want to come on, you want to get your message, you know, you may be, you may be, uh, royalty. You want to come on? Sure. You, you want to, you want to be a chairman who has a message to get out? Sure. You, I mean, it's just unbelievable. And there was David Feldman of BKFC, uh, as, as you know, we, we saw earlier in the program, Dave Feldman made a bit of a cameo. Uh, he told us when two weeks ago that the Mike Perry Eddie Alvarez fight is going to be for the King of Violence belt, and they're actually creating a title. And they asked me, someone said, "Oh, you know, there's a lot of fucking. How much are you getting paid for? This? I ain't getting paid nothing. I do this out of the kindness of my heart. When will you guys realize that I get paid nothing? None of this. I don't get paid for the views. I don't get paid for the polls. I don't get paid for anything. It's I mean, maybe I'm bad at business, if I'm being honest. Anyway." They sent us the belts. There's a poll out there. I didn't even, I think I know who's the winner. No, no, no. I don't know who's the winner. I think I know who was winning. Was it number two? I believe so. Here, we have yeah. the belts right here. It wasn't here. even close. Yeah, we got the pictures and the results. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, what do we got? What do we got? Do we have them? Oh, there they are. Look One, two, that. and three. So I remember showing this to you guys, and uh, I think you all internally said number two, right? B? Yeah. Within seconds, I yeah. said B. And then I put it out there, and uh, wouldn't you know it, 58% of the votes were uh, in favor of B, 29.9% in favor of C, and then uh, 12.1% in favor of A. One gripe with X, formerly known as Twitter, because that's how they write it in all the articles, because I posted the picture, I couldn't have the poll in the same tweet, so I think I got less t- uh, votes than usual. It was, in the f- it was in the, as we like to call it, the happy punch tweet, the second tweet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you got way less votes. Yeah. 300, it looks like. Yeah. So but, um, bad number for you. Yeah. Oh, no. It wasn't 300. It was 7,000. Is that what you said? 7,300. Oh, okay. Got it, got it, got it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I feel like it's elementary. Everyone likes... Why do you think it is? Is it the... It's uh, very clear it's big. It's... It's not busy. It's the crown. The other ones are super Crown's busy. Nice. The the fists on the fists on the one on the left like looks kind of odd. Like they're bending something, right? Yeah, like like bending a, a bar of iron, but it kind of looks like a guy like with his hands on the steering it. wheel. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. It sort of looks. Yeah, <laughs> to me, that's, that's a good point. It's as simple as there's way too much text. That's the focus of the other two, and it's too busy. The other one is very the bare knuckle part of it is very small and understated. The fist, king of violence, simple, clean, unbusy, crown. It's it's a perfect if it's it's a perfect choice. In fact, I w- I wouldn't be surprised if they floated these other options with no intention of ever even making them and knowing that it's going to be B. H- have we confirmed you're putting it around the winner? Uh, I'm very I mean I'm very much in demand these days. A lot of discussions that, that needs to be like had. It. Yeah, so. doing deals with Eddie Hearn over here. You're making Joshua versus uh, Eddie Hearn was trying to get me to put out my business. I mean, it was very uncomfortable. Um, yeah, yeah, talking about the offers and all that. Yeah, I mean, come on, Eddie. I mean, Act like you've been there before. He said, though, you know, look, some people don't like to do this in public, but I, I respect you, and let's uh, let's hash it out. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, I am not going to Dublin. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is very disappointing news. Breaking but, news, Frank? Yeah, of course. 
Um, that's okay. That's all right. You know, we're doing our thing here. We're happy. And um, I'm just glad you weren't so rattled by that that you were able to at least mention, you know, the Eubank and Ben fight. No, no, that was I was I was building to that. Yeah, I mean, how about that? Did you, I mean, maybe I can go. Look, you know, I'm we just, could do a roadshow there. Let's go. Well, but now he's trying to paint me as like an anti-boxing guy, and that's not exactly what I want. Um, I mean, he came on and said that Francis and Ganu's quote unquote win because he scored it for Francis and Ganu um, was the greatest. Uh, no, but he was saying like, "Oh, history. you're you're waving so, the flag." This and that. again, I don't. I I put out one tweet, like, "Oh, the boxing fans are going crazy right now because they're trying to say like, oh, let's see you do this against Robert Hellenius." I'm like, well, "What are you talking? He just did it to Tyson Fury. It was a horrible matchup. Like, just give the guy his props." This this definition of moving the goalposts. Yes, but in reality, this was really Francis versus MMA in a weird way. Because so many people wanted to say, I told you so. They wanted to say, I told you so after he left the UFC. They wanted to say, I told you so after the PFL deal. They wanted to say, I, mean, I told And so, like, there's no, there's nothing left to say. There's nothing that you could say. He won. Fair and square, 10 7 year. Francis Ngannou wins, raises his hand. It's Francis versus the world. It's Francis versus everybody. Like, like those t shirts. Yeah. Who, who oh, believed? Yes. Who believed? Really Nobody believed. Oh, I got that. Robert Hillen. I love Ade. Ade's like, like stop fights. it right now. Stop it. I'm like, yo, you don't Even think he that's... beats Derek Chisora? You don't think he Ooh. beats Robert Hellenia? What are you talking about? He just freaking smoked Tyson Fury. Smoked him. Even if that's true. Even if that is true. Even if the next fight Francis has is a boxing match and he loses it to somebody else. And and let's say they, they do smoke him. Let's say they actually do beat the brakes off him. He took Tyson Fury to a very close decision after Tyson Fury just got finished knocking out a consecutive streak of top-level boxers. Like, who cares? This That night will never be erased. It does not matter what happens from here. He could he could lose five boxing fights in a row. That night cannot be erased, what he did to Tyson Fury. So who cares? Who cares? Like, also, Francis Ngannou is so far above some of the names that you're mentioning now in terms of drawing yes. power and ability. Like... They, they need to be, like, crawling to beg to fight Francis Ngannou at this point. Wh who cares about those guys? Who cares? They're not even in the conversation. Usyk, Joshua, Fury, Wilder. These are the guys that Francis Ngannou now has, he has appeared to in the boxing world. Okay, so now that we have, like, talked to all these people and they've all had their say, what do you think he does, Rick? The next time we see Francis Ngannou compete, He's going to box. He the money so. is going to be too big. I mean, we just had a founder and, and executive member of the PFL say they don't know what he's going to do. To me, that tells me that boxing money's coming and uh, it's going to be that. Yeah, I mean, once they said that there's like an offer on the table. But, let, yeah. you know, Saudi Arabia is involved in, in uh, MMA too, so it doesn't have to be boxing. It just makes more sense, though. It's so much easier, right? The the idea of, to me, the idea of convincing Fran Francis to box again is the bar is so much easier than convincing somebody the caliber of fighter that you would need to make this a successful event to do MMA against Francis Ngannou. Yeah. The same way we all counted out Francis and said Tyson Fury is going to manhandle him and take him apart, that MMA fight, that, per that boxer coming into MMA or that high-level person coming into MMA they're going to be in the same spot that Francis was in. And that's not a fun spot to be in. Now, if somebody is taking it upon their shoulders the way Francis did and said, hey, I'm going to shock the world, more power to him. I would love to see somebody like Deontay Wilder do that. But man, that is a lot harder to convince somebody than to be in the other side of it and just say, hey, Francis, want to box again? You look pretty damn good. Want to do it one more time? Feels easy. Yo, Francis versus Deontay Wilder in PFL is nuts. Francis versus Deontay Wilder on a corner. In PFL, in the boxing ring, I'm in. I don't care. Does it, do, don't, don't have to push me too hard to convince me. I'll watch that anywhere, anytime, anyplace. Uh, what about you, GC? Your vote? Yeah, I don't know. Twitter's starting to sell me on uh, Francis Ngannou and Robert Hellenius. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so ridiculous. Some of these. It's two. just ridiculous, the idea that like that would be a real... Like, I understand the the intention, right? They're trying to say a lesser top ranked heavyweight, like a, a guy on the just, lesser end of that. He just beat be, Tyson who Fury. Who cares? Who cares? Why it's, why is that even relevant to the not conversation? A, yeah, it's so silly. It's you know what's equally stupid, by the way, that I hate. I really hate this. Tell the me. real fight thing. 
Oh, have to stop the real. I thing. did this. I said this already. Yeah, I know. But now we're getting it. Even Francis Ngannou knocked down. If he would have hit uh, him with some theory, elbows, if he, if he comes in yeah, and stop, hits him on the stop, ground, stop, enough, stop, man. Stop. The real fight thing is the dumbest possible dumb, thing. Dumb, it's dumb, so dumb. dumb. It's, it's so, so dumb. dumb. Yes, yeah, stop, stop. It now, wasn't you a real could... fight. It was a boxing match. That's what it was. Nah, I, and by and the Francis way, Francis did. It's taking away from Francis to say that. To be honest, Francis did enough that he, it can stand on its merits that we don't have to worry about a re, quote unquote real fight. We saw what happened in boxing, and it was damn impressive. I do hate the he's never had a fight before stuff. That line sure. triggers me. Oh, I mean, he's this never is had the a reason, fight by the way, that like we kind of had faith in Tyron Woodley against a guy like Jake Paul, right? There's a there's a certain level of, yeah, he hasn't boxed, but he's had fights, right? Yeah. Or even Ben Askren to a lesser extent. That one was a little harder. But Tyron Woodley has been in there, has struck with some great guys who know how to strike, is a fighter, and Jake Paul was very fresh and new in his boxing career. That was the whole thing. That was the reason that there was interest in that. Same thing with Anderson Silva. Now, Anderson Silva has boxed prior to that fight, but not as much as Jake Paul. Um, and that's and and not certainly not as much as um uh certainly not as much as uh Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who he fought. So there's a certain element to that that's that's farcical, that's a little bit disingenuous. Like, yeah. Francis Ngannou is a fighter. He's not. He was not a professional boxer, but he's a fighter, no doubt. Like, I mean, it's just silly to even discount his chances based on that. Uh, and and there's another thing that people discount, like, oh, he's never had a fight before. Yo, he's made the walk in front of twenty thousand people. The pressure, and, yes, pressure was not going to get to him. Yes, none of this was going to get to him. Now, you know, nerves, new discipline, all that. But like, enough with that. He's never had a fight before. He's not <laughs> some guy off the couch. He's not even like a KSI type of figure. Like he's had his no, fights. Not, he's had his yeah. fights. Enough no. with this. The, uh, the he's disrespect. not a Jake Paul. He's not a KSI. He's no. he's a he's a fighter who's been who's been headlining pay per views in the biggest stage. Uh, Dan Hardy talking about the the UFC fighters and wanting to see other guys um, cross over and things like that. Yes or no? Is the UFC if the UFC has stood behind the idea and Dana White has said this and stood behind the idea. We make the fights that want to see. We make the biggest fights. Is the UFC under obligation to try to make John Jones versus Francis Ngannou? So I'm happy that you brought that up. And there's a reason why I didn't bring it up to, you know, Don. And for now, I don't think it's a story because John is going to be out for, I think, a very good portion of 2024. And Francis, we assume, is going to want to get back in. Hell yeah. In that I mean, time. Yeah. What, we're going to keep him on the sidelines again for John Jones. Yeah. Like, we just went through that. Um, so that's why I didn't like, I was uh, not to go too long. Yeah. The timing sucks. Yeah. The timing sucks. Uh, it absolutely sucks. That being said, I wish we could get to a point where all these things were possible, where certain guys get to play by certain rules, but we know better. We know better. It's why every time I've asked someone on today's show, if they, if they regret it in Las Vegas today, I know the answer to that question. There's no one in their mind. And you could say, you know, factually, there's no one bigger than the business. Even Conor McGregor isn't bigger than the business. There are people who could do great outside of the business, but there's no one bigger than those three letters, and that's by design. And so ultimately, there could be someone, you know, in an office somewhere in Las Vegas saying, like, golly, we kind of, you know, we kind of screwed that one up. But ultimately, like, they don't care. They're doing just but fine. They're doing just fine. So I, d I don't think that they are going to do that because that would be an admission of, of, of defeat. Because they, they had it. Oh, I agree with you. I agree with you. That, that doesn't that's mean we have to how accept they it. May, they may perceive it, or specific, if we're talking specifically Dana White. But is it a loss to put on the biggest fight? If the UFC tomorrow said, you know what? We were impressed by Francis Ngannou. And we think John Jones can beat him. John Jones versus Francis Ngannou is a fight when John Jones is healthy that we're going to make. We're going we're gonna to pivot away from this Stipe Miocic fight. And we're going to do Francis Ngannou versus John Jones. What's the harm to the UFC? To me, that's making tons of money. Like, it, what's a bigger fight than that right now? The harm is they had this guy under their umbrella, on Ego. their roster. Yes, that's the harm. That's saying we screwed up. Because now we have to share the pie for a guy that we already had under our thumb. 
getting 600000 to defend his heavyweight title. They'll never do it. They'll never do it. They're just, they're praying for the day he loses, slips on the banana peel. He's 37. He's going to get old. He's, you know, historically, everyone starts losing at some point when you get to 40, and then they'll just do wash you, their hands. Do you the think situation. that there's somebody at Endeavor who would feel differently? Uh, you know, that, 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 that's USC, why I say, or, or not even Endeavor, like, there's some, like, big, you know, shareholder or something. Yeah, or yeah, TKO who's like, or, yo, what are we doing here? But ultimately, The money, the, I mean... I think we, we want to be careful to like think about history here, right? UFC did not want to do Conor McGregor versus Floyd Mayweather. No, right? The they timing were dragged was into it, kicking and screaming, and then said, "Okay, we're going to capitalize on this and make a, a ton of money up." But that was Conor McGregor's design. That was Conor McGregor forcing that forward. This is an opportunity to learn from that. I'm sure that Mayweather McGregor was a very lucrative event for the UFC. Um, I imagine that John Jones versus Francis Ngannou, without knowing the exact numbers, would be very lucrative for the UFC, for TKO, for Endeavor. Is it their obligation to now stockholders to try to make that happen? I I would argue yes. I would argue that look, they there, are, there, there's they're a, obligated. To there's this. a world where by the time John Jones is ready to return, Francis Ngannou has a win over Deontay Wilder, and maybe is set up to fight Tyson Fury. You know, Fury fights Usyk and wins, and now you got the rematch. Like, there's a world where he's actually John Jones is not as high on the list. <laughs> yes. See, I think that's there, there's I a think world. That's, that's I I don't I don't think that's w true. What's a bigger fight, Ngannou Fury two or Ngannou Jones? Ngannou Jones. Ngannou Fury two for the undisputed yeah yeah heavyweight title. Well, no, because uh, Usyk. No, 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 no. no. Fury, I'm saying oh, he, you're saying after Usyk, and Ngannou beats, beats Wilder. Wilder. Yeah, but Fury now the beats timeline. Usyk. The timeline is getting longer now, too, because F no. Fury and Usyk's not happening for a bit now. It, it has to happen by March. Yeah, it'll, so it'll happen before. So they both happen at the John same Jones time. Yeah, they both happen at the same time. Let's say they both happen in March. Different promotions, right? Uh, Wilder against Ngannou is in PFL, and then Fury, Usyk In MMA and PFL, and then Fury and Usyk Happens in March, yeah. The, for the, and, the and undisputed then, title. Yeah, and then in August. Like, John Jones isn't going to come back before July at the earliest. If yeah, Francis gets a win. Yeah, Francis Francis gets a win in boxing over Deontay Wilder. Yeah, Francis. No, 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 not boxing. If he if he does it in MMA, if this happens the way Don is laying out, he does it in oh, MMA. Oh, wait. So, All right. So he fights Deontay Wilder in MMA. Yeah. Fury goes and gets undisputed from Usyk, and then they fight. What's the bigger or, fight? Or what if he fights Usyk? What if he fights Usyk for undisputed? What if what if Usyk captures those titles and he fights Usyk? I don't think. All I'm don't saying th is. It looks like Francis Ngannou is going to fight before John Jones is ready to come back. Yeah. Meaning I his agree. stock is oh, going to continue I feel to go like up for sure. Right. So he, and let's say he wins that. Could fight. continue to go. Up. Yes. Let's say he wins that fight. All of a sudden, I'm like, uh, nah. John Jones versus Francis. In fact, more so. The the lo the longer Francis is kept away from John Jones, and the more success he's able to have, the more that fight becomes the fight that needs to be made. Could you make the argument that the UFC has tried to make this, or are you saying that they just need to pony up enough money where they get it done? Tried to make it since oh, he's left the UFC. In Ganu versus Jones, no, not since he left it. But I mean, every time someone asks him about it, Dana White's always just like, "I tried to make it. I tried to make it for no. the last three years, and I just couldn't get it done." Mm, but they weren't, you know, they weren't giving him the freedom. They weren't like the, it was. I just don't feel like the UFC is like, okay, he was competitive with Tyson Fury. Now we have to make that fight. No, they're not. I'm sorry no, to be the bearer of bad news. They're not going to make yeah, that. I, and I don't I, think I'm, it's I'm on the you. back of him being competitive with Tyson Fury in a vacuum. It's on the back of, I believe that that is one of the biggest possible fights in combat sports that could be made. If, if the UFC's credo, if Dana White's credo is, we make the fights that people want to see. We make the biggest fights. That hasn't been their credo for a they're long not, time. They're not doing it. It's, well, what what outside of this has been left on the table? I don't feel like there's a lot. Um, Fedor. I mean, this is now, we're talking decades now. I'm, ta I'm talking. I mean, there's been a history. lot of fights. Uh, GSP, Anderson Silva, they didn't make that one. Yeah, I uh, mean. But I'm this, just saying, I'm just saying. This is he, ancient history at this he's point. He's been doing the, we make the biggest fights. Like, make the biggest fights when it's in their, you know, in their orbit. When they could, like, he, they're not making the biggest fight with, they didn't make it with Francis. They GSP and Anderson Silva wasn't because, it like, they, those guys were in the UFC. So, like, the circumstances are are different in in many of these cases. This is a, there's, there's no limitations here. There is nothing preventing them from making that fight. Which one? If they, uh, for John Jones versus Francis. Uh, oh yeah, there's John a Jones big one. Injury. Ego. But 
ego. Okay, but that's not a no. But I'm, I'm, I'm a saying, shareholder. Obviously, a shareholder you, can't you, be. you are right, and we said this even before all of this. Not only are there no limitations, they have the same broadcast partner. Usually, it's the broadcast partner that right. is the biggest stumbling block, right? Oh, it's, it's going to be on Showtime. Uh, well, you, you don't think ESPN would love that fight? Now, now it gets into the territory of like in eighteen months. What is the broadcast situation, which is a whole nother sure, kind sure. of complication and, and mixed bag. Either way, my point is, although P, uh, although uh, it sounds like he has his own. Well, no, it sounds like Don wants to go back to ESPN, right? But is saying, hey, we want a short term deal. Maybe they sure. don't get a short term deal. So there's there's a lot up in the air. My point is, the UFC is now part of TKO, a publicly traded stock. And has For now, to answer wasn't there to. something that came out last week where there's a group that's trying to buy them? Uh, Endeavor released a, a memo that um, they are they are looking to figure out ways to uh, make the business profitable, but TKO is not subject to any of, okay. of what's going on. The other parts of the business are are what they're uh, focusing on at the moment. But they they have shareholders, they have other executives. This is no longer UFC is sitting in isolation and making these decisions unilaterally. If I'm a, if I'm Endeavor, if I'm an executive at TKO, why should Francis Ngannou and John Jones not be made to make us the mo the maximum money? That's my question. Now, is is there a world where they say, "Hey, Dana doesn't want it, UFC doesn't want it, we're not going to do it"? Sure. Right, I, feel, I feel like that's the case. I feel but like they're just not going to do it. But they're not going to do it because it's been so public and so personal. And the truth is, Francis doesn't need it anymore. He's got so many options, whether it's Wilder, whether it's Joshua, whether it's Fury. I mean, just those three fights alone. I, I think this is a bigger fight. Man, I don't in know. All, in all circumstances, this is a bigger you fight. See that? You see that? You think all those superstars are And I are think it's out? due to Francis going elsewhere and raising his stock, but John Jones versus Francis Ngannou is still a bigger fight. It's just amazing how this played out. It's just amazing. Francis won the game, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. He's Francis so freaking calm game. about everything. Like, how is he so calm? He's just like, yeah, it was good. I could, you could see the uh, the disappointment that he didn't get the W starting to. Oh, that I think that's the part that he cares about way more. Yeah, yeah. Than, We're than all like celebrating of, of, of sticking it to people. He he thinks he won the fight. Yeah. and is upset. And Eddie Hearn said he's walking away without one of the the greatest. Sorry, not one of the greatest win in boxing. Like, that's legit. That yeah. I would I would be upset if I was Francis and, and thought I got that done. Could you imagine if they were said, uh, well, they wouldn't have said and new. What would they have said? Yeah, uh, the, uh, it wouldn't have been and new. Well, they said and still undefeated. And yeah. I was like, well, that's kind of both of them. Mm. And then they and then they said Tyson Fury. That is true. Um, but Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. What a time, guys. What a time. I think Turkey invited us to do a road show in the uh, side. I think it's pretty much it. what he said, I'm right? I know. <laughs> flights, Frank. You already got the hotel booked? Right. Where should we stay? You, what do you know about Riyadh, uh, Frank? Anything? There's a Luxor there. There is a Luxor? Okay, oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you think uh, we can get proper um, uh, power strips over there? Yeah, For sure. Blow, blow the fuse again. What a day, gents. Um, all right, let me quickly tell you about our good friends over at DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, a lot going on in mixed martial arts, obviously, this weekend. Uh, they're back in Brazil. Good to see the UFC back in the uh, the motherland of Brazil. And uh, they've got Jalton Almeida against Derek Lewis. Speaking of big heavyweight fights, do you think they'll? how many times do you think we'll see the Derek Lewis win over Francis Ngannou in promos this week? Quite a few. Not a lot of highlights. I was going to say, what though. are they going to show? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and raised, I mean, that's literally all there is. Yeah, that is true. Um, but nevertheless, and uh, Joe Cordina competing as well, as we said, uh, with uh, with Eddie Hearn. So there's always a lot to like in the world of combat sports. But, of course, the NBA is back as well. Uh, Nick's a little comme ci, comme ça. But there's a lot of exciting things going on. And, of course, over at... DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. They are celebrating an unbeatable offer with new customers right now. New customers can score $200 instantly in bonus bets for throwing down $5 on the NBA. Win or lose, it doesn't matter. You'll start your season with an instant dub. 
And with DraftKings parlays, everyone's got a shot at even bigger basketball wins. String together multiple bets from the same game or build your parlay across multiple games for a shot at making your payday even sweeter. Basketball is more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use code DMMA Hour. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly for betting just $5. Only on gambling, excuse me, only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code DMMA Hour. The crown is yours. Gambling problem call 100 Gambler or visit www.100gambler.net. In New York, call 877 hope and y or text hope and y that's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resorts in Kansas. Licensee partner, Golden, Nug- Golden Nugget, Lake Charles, Louisiana, 21 and older, age varies by jurisdiction, void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See sportsbook.draftkings.com slash basketball term. For eligibility and deposit predictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Yeah. Oh, I have such a bad headache. I'm just going to put down the volume. I don't know what's going on in my head uh, right now, but I also want to give a shout out to my good friends over at BetterHelp. We love BetterHelp. And as everyone knows, the holidays can be a very difficult time of the year for all of us between the parties and the wonderful time spending, spent reconnecting with family and friends. The end of the year can also bring loneliness frustration, and anxiety. Reaching out to a professional can help, and BetterHelp offers convenient, affordable therapy that is entirely online. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash MMA hour today to get 10% off your first month. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash MMA hour. That is... Our good friends over at BetterHelp. Did I read the wrong? Is that what happened? Did I read the wrong one? I I don't think so. All right. Uh, I do want to let you know that BetterHelp is entirely online and it was designed to be flexible and simple to fit in your schedule. Uh, Just fill out a brief questionnaire online and BetterHelp will match you with a licensed therapist. Signing up is easy. And if you decide you'd like to switch to a new therapist, you can do, do so at no extra cost. So again... Go to betterhelp.com slash MMA hour today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash MMA hour. Support them because they support us, but also support yourself. Uh, one of our favorite sponsors. They offer an incredible service. And I hope anyone out there who is feeling alone, feeling anxious, struggling in any way, shape, or form will reach out to the good people at BetterHelp. I've heard from many fans, listeners, viewers of the show who have told me they love the service. And so I hope you check it out as well. Um, do we have to do any, uh, I know you, well, you did a couple of picks, right? GC. Yeah, I did a couple of bets. We can all right. them real quick. I Let's... mean, uh, once again, I take an under an Amanda Serrano fight and it just does not work out for me. It was just another one of those where it just straight from the opening bell. I was like, Oh, this is probably not going to hit. Um, yeah, I just keep, I just keep making donations to the, uh, Amanda Serrano unders foundation. Very, very uh, historical moment going 12 rounds. Are you done? Rounds. Are you done with the uh, Serrano fight? Yeah, it made it even worse because instead of watching it for 20 minutes, I had to watch it for 36 uh, minutes where I was just like, this is not going to get finished, where it just like wasn't even close. Um, and then to Saturday, I mean, you talk about some tight butt cheek moments here. Uh, you're reading that scorecard. I was like, wow, I'm about to burn six units on a minus 400. Like this, uh, this might be my worst bet of all time. Uh, but I mean, can I, can I fully break the fourth wall here? Oh yeah, I had a follow up, but yes, in please, my go own ahead. brain, yeah, it might have been the best case scenario for for me. Personally. Yes, you know, I, I win the bet, but Francis has this unbelievable performance. We get to celebrate him, you know, we get to take our victory laps. It's it's a great time all around, uh, and I still get the money in my account. You know, it's okay. So I was just going to ask you: Was there any part of you that wouldn't have been upset because of the moment, witnessing the moment? You're like, yeah, you know what? No, no, no. I was actually the, it, once he dropped him, I was like. All right, I think I'm okay with losing this money because that was like such an electric, such a magical moment. I was like, I'm all right with losing this bet. Uh, I guess really it wasn't even the money. I think it was just Frank was definitely going to gloat to me hard if if Ngannou won a decision. He said he he said he had it typed up. Uh, two different messages when they were reading the scorecards. One was just like, oh man, and the other was like. I knew it. You idiots doubted him. Like it was never a doubt that he was going to win by decision. Uh, and obviously he had to send the send the old man one. 
Yeah. That that is that is that is interesting because like I think we all kind of wanted to see history in that moment because it got so you know I wasn't rooting for anyone I had no dog in the race but at that point you're like oh is he gonna get what he earned right because like we keep saying like oh man like he he won and everything like imagine if he had actually gotten his hand I know like it would be uh, just crazy so the final recap get about a half unit on the weekend and I mean we're talking. One more winning week, and we're at the triple digits mark right there. 99. Oh, 99.19 total. 99. Luke. Big bounce back, that. baby. That's a great costume, by the way. Where did you get that? It's actually I mean, phenomenal. No one's even seen it yet. I mean, we got. Oh, you got the pants, pants the Zubaz? This is just. This is as good as it gets right here. I thought those were real muscles. Where did you get those? Where did you get that whole getup? Halloweencostumes.com. Shout out. Is that a real thing? Oh, yeah. And where's that coming from? That's Frank. Uh, not the highest quality drop, Look, but I mean, it gets it good. It's in the 90s. <laughs> Snap into a Slim Jim. Why did you pick a pro wrestler? Uh, all right. So I, was I between love it. Two. I was between two. This Macho Man. I didn't want to do something as elaborate as last year. You know, we had some technical issues. I couldn't sit in my seat with the blown up pterodactyl. Uh, so I wanted to do something that I could just sit here. It was between this and Shrek. Shrek. You had to wear a mask, though, yeah, and if I took much. it off, uh, you know, I would have had to paint my face green, all that. Now, are you going to a party tonight, or did you go to one this weekend? No, this is it, man. That's it. All for you guys. No, uh... Okay, so it really just hurts my feelings that much more that I'm the only one that got the money. I mean, look at these locks, too. I mean, no, the lo it's it the whole thing is fantastic, but I feel like you're 30? 30, yeah. This is prime Halloween party age, no? Yeah, no invites. No invites. <laughs> Uh, I do have to flex, though. I mean, they gave me a beard to wear. No need for it, though. That is a good point. Not for long, though. Not for long. Next time you see me, it's just going to be the stash. Oh, Shout out to November. Right. Man. Um, well, speaking of uh, invites, I was curious about, we talked so much about Saturday. How did it go, uh, Rick and Frank? Oh, you guys watching on Saturday together? How did that, that go? Great. Frank, why don't you, uh, why don't you fill them? It's personal. Just a backstory. You guys were supposed to get together to watch. Yeah, no, no. Isn't that what Rick happened? Gano. Is that not correct? Frank was coming over. Frank, you, you take the lead here. Pizza. Um, Last I heard was dinner party. At, yeah. yeah. Ice cream. Soup was getting up. cold. I think I saw a text. Oh. He's, it just didn't work out, unfortunately. Man. Wow. Shout you didn't, you didn't, you didn't show up? You didn't show up? Wow. Not at all. Not you didn't, Frank just has that line canned. It didn't I work think, out. I think we need Sorry. to rewind. So let's rewind to Yeah. Last. Rewind. I knew he wouldn't give the full story. Okay. Break let's, it down let's for rewind. us here, Let's rewind to last Monday when I'm here. I see Frank. Hey, I'm gonna be in your neck of the woods. I'm going yeah. out. I'm going out on Long Island. I'm going out to uh, to uh, what was it? A concert or or something? A signing? Whatever it was. Um, some nonsense that only Frank would care about. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll be passing through. Hey, I'm I'm renting a car. I'm driving. Maybe I'll come over. I said, Frank, it would be my honor. It would be my pleasure to have you in my house. I would love nothing more. Please, thank you. Thank you for inviting yourself into my home. Uh, it, it would be my honor to host yeah. you. Then, you know, maybe a, a little bit of time passes by, and then it turns into, hey, well, what are you going to be doing for the Fury and Ganu fight? Maybe maybe I could watch that with you. And I was like, That's nice. yeah, you know, um, I kind of get locked in. Like, I just ruined a watch party recently. Simple, I'm no, locked in on, on the fight itself, and <laughs> I, I kind of have social media obligations, and Mike Heck wants to strangle me now based on that, and and you know it's I'm not a great hang when when I have to do my work, so, um, you know, yes, you can come, but just know that that's what I'm going to be doing. Like, you know, you're more than welcome. Come sure. on, come on by. It's not going to put me out any, but just know, like, I'm not going to you know be able to chop it up much. Great, no problem. See ya. Come the weekend. You know, I'm kind of sitting around all day thinking, wow, you know, it's it's getting late into the day. It's, it, you know, like Fury and Ganu are about to walk. Where's Frank? Like, is he okay? Did something happen? Mm -hmm. He hasn't been on the, by the way, he hadn't been on the group chat. Like, we're all chopping it up. Yeah. You know, texting about the event, laughing about things. And he just nowhere to be seen. Didn't even send a message. So I'm, I'm getting worried. I just let him know, like, hey, Frankie, you know, the soup's getting cold. We got soup. Uh, my wife made some delicious um, soup. Um, chicken noodle soup. Wow, wow! And uh, it's just out. sitting out. There's just bowls. For Frank. Let me know how many we need. Is it for you? Is it for you and your wife? Like you got mi casa su casa. Let me know what we need. And uh, there was not any like acknowledgement. There was no hey, 
you know, things kind of went sideways in the time. Nothing? And just like, no sorry? No, we didn't get much of anything. So you still got the soup? What kind of soup? Chicken noodle. Chicken right, noodle. Right. Okay. Um, I mean, that's pretty. But it, I mean, is rude the word that comes to mind? I don't know. I mean, soup. I'm going to let you. I'm going to let you decide. You tell me what word fits. I actually feel like. I'm too close. I'm I too feel close like Frank this. should decide. Frank, how could you invite yourself over to someone's house? And not show up, but not only not show up, it's one thing to cancel, but you didn't actually like close the loop. You didn't actually send the message. You know, I'm, I'm going to think on this real hard <sighs> and make a decision about how I should fix this. Inconsiderate and then I'll think is about, the word I use. Yeah, inconsiderate? Yeah, are I'll you, consider that one too. Are you, are you embarrassed? Oh, no, he's not embarrassed. <laughs> he's done this to me so many times. Yeah, I, I no texted GC Let's right away and said, I know how you feel. Wow. You feel, nice to have a uh, Soup's a always better in the, the second day. The band anyway. of Frank's disappointment. Man. Frank, I'm disappointed. I, I actually... That's the word we're going to use then? Is disappointed the best word? I don't know. But I feel like I, I was... You know, I was I was really in favor of this. It, it actually warms. I I don't usually partake, but I I, I get very, I get nachas. Do you guys know what nachas means? Like I get like warmth in my in my soul when I hear the crew hanging out. I feel like I can live vicariously. So this was an exciting next chapter because it's usually you and GC his apartment or you know somewhere in the city. You going to the Burbs to hang out with the Jackmans was big. Would have been it would have been huge. I mean, he yeah. completely fumbled it. We're supposed to take a boys trip, a little road trip down to PFL World Championship. Oh my god! Yeah, who knows? I mean, he's out. Probably gonna end up being me and Rick. Who knows? We don't know. Are we gonna get a text? We don't know. Who knows? I know we're all gonna meet somewhere, and then he's just not gonna show up. And Here's my like, thing: there there may right, be no more front. dependable person on the on the crew than Frank when it comes to the show. Why so dependable when it comes to the show? I mean, you came in at three a.m. when we were in Manchester, but so not dependable when it comes to things outside of the show. What is that all about? Um, I don't have an answer for that, man. Yeah, you're <laughs> some real soul searching stuff here. <laughs> President Frank's gonna go to HR soon. Yeah, I'm just a piece of shit. <laughs> no, come on. Oh my god. <laughs> well, we don't want that. We don't. Oh, uh, Frank. Yeah. I'm sure it's all gonna be okay. You know right? what? You know how we'll end this, Frank. Even though, you know, Francis and Ganu showed up in the biggest way possible, and you didn't show up at all. You know, you're not half the man how that long he have is. You been um, you're welcome anytime at my house, no matter what. If you ever find yourself out, um, we'll call it Amityville, Amityville. Uh, to keep up, up appearances. Sure. If you're ever out in Amityville, you're always welcome. Oh, that's that a, really that's a mensch a move. Thank you. That's a mensch move. I think the move is now Frank needs to invite the Jackmans over to his house for some, what is it, chicken wing dip or something? Ooh, like man, no, I mean, I've, I've invited Frank over to my house about a few dozen times. Never, never been invited to old Frankie's house. Wow, not, not once, huh, Frank? Shared an Uber. Nope. Not even, not even to the neighborhood, you know? Wow. You know, you know now that you mention thing. it, I haven't been invited either. You actually sprung that up, that we took an Uber and we dropped you off at your house. Man, you remember yeah. that. I forgot that ever happened. Wow. I don't even remember when that happened. You were like, oh, yeah, that was that one time that we... Oh, uh, you know, I remember now. You no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm sorry that didn't happen. Um, yeah, unfortunate. I had I had, I was having cake during the fight. It was great. Was yeah, what Ben and Jerry's kind of flavor? Uh, yes. It was like uh, milk and cookies and oh, uh, some sweet. Yes, there weren't a ton of options. It was like a Wait, strawberry this is ice one. cream or the cake. No, no, no. It was an ice cream cake. Ben and Jerry's. Oh wow! Oh wow! I didn't, yeah. I didn't even know they made that. That's incredible. Oh, it's amazing. Did you bring any for us? Or I've or actually been dreaming about it throughout today's show because I'm always so hungry after the show. I'm oh, you have leftovers. Vegan. Oh yeah. So does uh, Rick apparently? That is no, true. no. We finished the soup. Don't worry. Oh yeah, we got a ton of good stuff. Um, shout out to Mr. Beast. They sent me like a Feastables Halloween oh. box. Do you see? They sent me a Halloween box oh. of mini Feastables, and and I opened it with the kids and a and a um uh hand. Like a no, 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 no. Uh, um, a skull busted out of the thing. Wow. It was it was wow. actually brilliant. Uh, the chocolates are good. You know, like the, the, I looked at the ingredients. Decent. The the ingredients are pretty basic. There's no like hydrogenated oil nonsense, anything like that. So I mean, that was that's got to be a big uh, plus for the kids. Oh my god, my son! Like, you getting Mr. Like, Beast to send you packages? Oh yeah, yeah. With the street cred, it's huge. It was huge. Um, so that was very exciting. All three kids scored this weekend, so that was wow. pretty exciting. Whoa. The kids hat trick. Uh, yeah, I mean it was pretty big. Never, never been done. Of course, never happened. Never been done. Um, so I'd say overall, a pretty big weekend. 
for everyone. You know, we're over the FOMO now. We're we're on to November tenth. Uh, big show here. I mean, you would have missed the hat trick. You would have missed the party. Like, yeah, no, I, you, you made the right call. You know yeah. this. Uh, this is now so seven eleven. 20. I've had, uh, I've been lucky enough, thank God, 20 birthdays. I have not missed one so far. So I'm very excited. I, I guess you can include the three birth, you know, like the actual births. Yeah, the births, right? So I guess it's 23 birthdays if you want to be um, specific. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Iron Man Street going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would always hear I might already have <laughs> lost that one. So yeah. Uh, I always heard these interviews with people, especially in sports broadcasters. Oh, I miss so many birthdays. I miss so many plays, events, this and that. And I just, I don't know. There might come a time where I have to, you know, make a decision. Uh, but so far, so good. I haven't had to, well, yeah. I, I actually have had to make, I've turned down things. Um, but where like I couldn't turn it down, I guess is, is yeah. what I was saying. Once you miss one, you've missed them all. Yeah. Well, last year yeah. they came out to uh, Jake Paul Anderson Silva. I remember it was this weekend. <laughs> yeah, see, that's it? the hack. You, you bring them out, now all bets are off, right? Yeah, it was just tough to bring him to Saudi Arabia, you know. Yeah, I mean. Although when I did show them that Ronaldo was there, I, both I was Ronaldos, about to say they probably would have enjoyed. They it had more FOMO than I did. Uh, they're like, "Oh, Luis Figo's there, Roberto Firmino's there. This is incredible." They're telling me about all their stats and everything like that. Uh, is there anything left to be said regarding Francis and Ganu? Luckily, we have another. Um, Turkey's show. actually calling back. I think he is that true. His Excellency has something else to say. Is this true? No. It's oh, not. okay. Because I was like, maybe they had the meeting and we could break the news right now. Oh God. Uh, <laughs> oh my dear. Um, my road show. I like the sound of that though, Turkey. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, nicest guy. Ever. Oh, was he nice? Like I, I talked to him, and um, I was like, "How are you?" And I'm just like, we're live. I was just hoping. He's like, "Well." How are you today? Oh, wow. <laughs> like, I don't think you're understanding. <laughs> we need answers now. I don't have time no to No one asks you that, right? <laughs> it was just super nice. They threw me off guard. I'm like, maybe I should slow down and show some humility. Just I like imagine Frank I is like, well, well you know, I feel bad that I missed the uh, Jackman soup party. Um, but we're going to make it up to him. Yeah. No one, what, what's up, dude? Yeah. Like, uh, to what's your up, excellency, player? But uh, how are you? <laughs> Uh, did you want to give a shout out to our good friend Robert Pearson? I did. Uh, yeah. Good call. Yeah. We're we're going to uh, show a graphic here. Our good friend Robert Pearson and his company Real Digital are partnering with the Doe Fund for a very cool uh, charity thing, um, and we're involved. Or Ariel Hawani is involved. You can see on the screen now that piece of art on the right side. That's going to be auctioned off. Um, to help the Doe Fund with proceeds going to the Doe Fund. The, the Doe Fund, for anybody who doesn't know, they help homeless New Yorkers get back on their feet. They provide paid work, transitional housing, and job training for the homeless, uh, and also focus on criminal justice reform, homeless services, career training, all that type of stuff. So doing a good thing. Um, and Helwani, uh, the artwork that you see there is going to be autographed and auctioned off. And you also, if you are the winning bidder, in addition to the art, you get a call with Ariel. From right there. He's going to be sitting right there, and you'll talk to him for a few minutes. Uh, so if you want to bid on that, the website is charitybuzz.com slash MMM2. There's also a QR code. And you can scan the QR code if, if you can see it. The auction runs through November 7th. So high bidder, autograph poster, a pretty cool poster for those that can see it, and uh, a chat with uh, old AH over there. Yo, that uh, poster the is sick. I was going to yeah. say the poster's fire. Rob Pearson did it himself, so we go throwing a bid. Here? You know, just crank that thing up. Yeah, can we get that in here? He'll want he ten seven to the bone. Sheesh. Yeah, I'll talk to Rob about getting us a, a print of that. Love it. Uh, go support the cause. He's been a great friend of the program and uh, of our work. In fact, the uh, the belt right over here was uh, designed. The ten seven belt. There it is. Yeah, was designed by the great Robert Pearson as well. We still got this belt. Excuse me, this glove. Um, it's it's like Art Jimerson esque. Shout out to the good people at Jim. You think Tyson Fury is going to send you any now? <laughs> the the Corey or whatever he calls it. What does he call it? <laughs> yeah, Corey. Yeah. Wow. That is some. I mean, what a turn of events. Who would have thought on Wednesday when we said goodbye that the talk of the combat sports world would be this guy, and that everyone's like now you know all of a sudden old Edward Hearn is like campaigning for his guy to get the fight, and you've got PFL with this, and you've got. 
His Excellency coming out and saying that he's got this plan on the. T- I mean, it's just unbelievable. He could have all fumbled the bag as badly yes. as Francis. Oh, uh, shall we all do that? I pray. To yes, the bag that badly. Amazing. Um, so, some great tweets, by the way, on Saturday. Uh, GC was on fire. I mean, you were killing it. Uh, danced up with the. He didn't get the 50k bonus one. That was a fun <laughs> one. I mean, there, there was just. I was just laughing. I, I don't know if great. I've ever had so much fun. It was great because the event ended 7:30. I did the post show, and then like from nine to 11, I was just looking at all the tweets. Uh, like, and everything was exploding. Yeah. And all the memes, all the tweets, all the jokes. I mean, it was a great time. We don't always get that much. Uh, that much enjoyment. Just. You know, again, we weren't rooting for anything, but it's like it's it's cool to see the story play out this way, especially a story that has been going on for this long. So again, congratulations to Francis Ngannou. Congrats to everyone involved in the event. Uh, Tyson Fury, uh, he lives to fight another day. I'm still very interested in seeing the Usyk fight. Uh, dare I say, I want to see the Ngannou rematch a little bit more. But as the great Conor McGregor once told me after he beat Jose Aldo, numbers and options. That's what the fight game is all about. Uh, I would say Francis Ngannou now has both of those very much in his favor. I don't think a lot of people thought that would be the case just a few months ago. So it's a beautiful thing. We shall end on that note. Frank, you could hit our music. What a time. What a time. Yes. And let us not forget that uh, the big MSG show is less than two weeks away now. And there's just so much going on. I mean, it's just going to be a... Uh, dizzying next few months but that's why we love covering the world of combat sports so much also uh you know big boxing events coming up big pro ref i mean it's just so much every weekend just so much oh i'm looking at this picture right now look at that francis with the dance who knew francis had those moves francis with the dance that was amazing I'm just admiring the uh This is the best the moment. Wall. Yeah, this is yeah, nice. Honestly. Uh it's just, you know, we've come a long way. We've come a long way. It's a beautiful thing, Frank. I'm spent. I don't know about you. I'm very tired. It's been a crazy day. Yeah. He said you got a headache. This wig is you got, tight, man. You got a headache too? To, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this thing off. Give me your best ooh yeah. Nah, I can't do it. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Dig it! Macho yeah. you know, it always bothered okay. me that he could snap the Slim Jims and they <laughs> didn't actually do that. And they and they, and they brought it back. Slim Jim back with WWE now. Did you see that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, they're back. Shout out to the great Macho Man. May he rest in peace, Randy Savage, uh, Mr. Poffo. Uh, anyway, thank you so much to everyone who joined us today. Uh, Turkey Al Sheik, the uh, Excellency. Thank you for the impromptu visit. Francis Ngannou, Eddie Hearn, Dan Hardy, Don Davis. Thanks to all of them. Thanks to all of you. We did it. Back on Wednesday, same time. Peace.